The first thing on the agenda is the taking steps and taking steps, the positive steps of service award presentation. Yeah, so uh, Bob Byer, come forward. So Barb has been on the board for three years. Appreciate everything she's done. She's been on um, this journey with me almost the whole time I've been on the board, right? And so when Barb put her name in to be on the Board of Education, COVID had been in the paper maybe once. Oh, yeah. Like it happened in <laughs> China. Something in China was going on, right? So nothing. Right? I, I always say that when I uh, interviewed for the superintendent's position, got this position, there was not one question about COVID. Um, and I got hired, and three days or five days later, we shut down schools. Um, and it dominated our lives. So in one of the most difficult stretches that you can imagine to be a new board member and to be on the board, uh, Barb was here. So we thank you so much for your service. Um, we can't give you a pay raise. I right, give you 100000 um, And there's a couple things here. First of all, you get a Taking Positive Steps for Service Award. But you also get this nice plaque that says the School District of Lodi and the Board of Education acknowledge Bob Beyer for grateful appreciation for your dedicated service to students, staff, and community. Well, thank you. year we met like what 26 way too many times way every time many. I was like I don't have to see you for a whole week all right <laughs> yeah no oh, it's been good I've enjoyed it so thank you thank you next we have a presentation actually two of them yeah, so uh, we have uh, two groups tonight that are going to perform for us at the board meeting. Our guys and ties will sing Shout, and this is Volk Jazz, right? And they are going to sing, 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 correct? All right, I will, I'm going to move. I'm going to slide over here. Okay? Yep. Um, but take it away.
Hello, we are Guys and Ties. We're going to sing um, a shout for you guys. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> Now wait a minute You know you make me wanna shout Kick my heels up and shout Throw my hands up and shout Throw my head back and shout Come on now, don't forget to say it Don't forget to say it Yeah, 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 yeah Say you will say right now, baby Say you will say right Come on, say come on Say you will say that This weekend. Right. Next weekend is the Lodi Sing and Swing. It's the huge fundraiser for the Lodi Music Boosters. So that's Saturday the 22nd. It starts at 7 p.m. Tickets are 10 bucks. Uh, the weekend after that is State Solo and Ensemble on the 29th. The weekend after that on Friday is Mad City Acapella at Oregon High School. It's really fun. And then the Thursday after that is our last concert of the year. Busy time of year. Wow. So. We all just came back from, a lot of you came back from Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Over there during spring break as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great job. Busy. Thank you for fitting uh, us in. Yes. <laughs> well, here's my other question for this, so the board knows. Uh, what time do you practice? 7 a.m. every morning, or in the mornings, right? So that is when they come into practice. There is not a folk jazz class or a guys and ties class. They come in at 7 a.m. in the morning. That's a lot. That's a lot. You guys are amazing. Fine, now you can go. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fun facts. Sorry. Oh, yeah? Thanks for having me. Oh, public input. There are three people with public input tonight. The purpose of the public input agenda item is for citizens and staff of the School District of Lodi to provide comments on any agenda item or publicly address the Board of Education on items that pertain to school business. A portion of the meeting during which the comment of the public is invited shall be limited to 10 people unless extended by a vote of the Board prior to the beginning of public input portion of the meeting. The amount of time allotted to each speaker will generally not exceed three minutes. If a speaker has questions for the Board, they'll be duly noted. Responses will be provided in an appropriate manner, but the board cannot respond to individual questions or individual comments as part of a public input agenda item. 
As an additional reminder, the board cannot take action on any item that is brought forth during the public input session or on any item that was not posted on the meeting agenda. If you are providing comments, we ask that you please come up to this table and state your name and the municipality of your residence. So first is Patty Herman. That's Pilot has a few minutes time around the board. Right there. Uh, I'm Patty Herman. I live in the city of Lodi. Thank you for letting me speak. I'm here today to uh, speak in support of funding for the Lodi Community Action Team, what I'll refer to as LCAT. The mission of LCAT, and you've heard this before, I'll just repeat it for you, is to create an environment to prevent youth substance abuse through education, environmental prevention strategies, and connections with caring adults. LCAT works with the community to empower youth to a healthy lifestyle. And I want to focus on a couple of parts of this mission, because I think two things that are especially important. The first is prevention. I used to work in the prevention field. Prevention is a lot less expensive than treatment. If we have to treat substance abuse issues, be that physical and mental health as well, it's going to be a whole lot more money than investing in those prevention strategies now. And then apart from the money is the fact that these are our kids. We don't want to get them to the point where they need treatment. We want to go for prevention. So that's the first part, prevention. The second part of the, folk, of the mission I want to focus on is community. When I talk about the work that Elcott does, I use the term our kids. I've never had a kid in the Lodi School District. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have grandkids in this district. My kids live elsewhere. But when I talk about kids, I believe, and I truly believe this with all my heart, that when children do well, when our children do well, our community does well. And the work that LCAT does is all about helping our children do well. So I'm going to continue to talk about our kids and continue to advocate for our kids in this community, even though they are not my kids personally. So that's it, short and sweet. I urge you to provide the funding as requested by LCAT. They're doing important work, and I think we need to see it continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Julie McKernan. So, I'm Julie McKernan from the Village of Dane, and I am here this evening also to give public input on the Lodi Community Action Team, or LCAT. At last, last month's board meeting, Sue Miller, our former school board president, gave public input which covered what LCAT is and the many things that they do within our community. So as not to be redundant, I want to approach this in a completely different way and ask you as board members some open-ended questions, which I know you cannot answer, meant to provoke thought prior to casting your vote for or against LCAP funding at this evening's meeting. So when was the last time that you saw drug deals or drug use happen at a store parking lot in Lodi? When, when was the last time you saw drug deals or drug use happen at one of our parks or at the tennis courts or the park in Harmony Grove? When did we see that at the bowling alley in the parking lot? If you've been here long enough to know that we had a bowling alley, which is no longer here. Um, I personally witnessed people uh, doing cocaine in a downtown restaurant bar in the 80s. Remember when Harmony Grove used to be called Pharmacy Grove or Drug Grove. I think that's pretty much been gone for a while. Um, our bowling game also had a name um, referring to drugs. Um, a student's mother was arrested and sent to jail for dealing drugs at a local business outside in the parking lot during the day. A drug dealer set up Residents adjacent to the middle school was renting one of the four units on the corner. Um, we had a student overdose to heroin, a student that died while huffing, and we had drugs being dealt on the streets that we lived, lived on. I think we can all realize that having LCAD in place has helped us to steer our community in the right direction of drug prevention, and it has unraveled decades of substance abuse that has existed in the community for decades. So, I guess I'd like to put it another way, um, Lodi community, so the first part of LCAT is supporting LCAT, is supporting our school district's five-year community-based strategic plan, a couple of the main pillars of community connection and keeping our kids safe, our students safe, 
and the second half of LCAT action team. I would wonder, would we defund all of the football coaches and then say, okay, players, let's get out to state this year without coaching and win? No, I don't think so. So we need to support Paula and Brian to be our coaches for LCAT, and I urge you that you vote yes to fund LCAT tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then last we have Renee Potter. Well, I have a couple of quick things. The first is... <laughs> Time's up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's the timer? Yeah, the timer. I know you can plan on that one. <laughs> oh, he'd love to do that at home. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was LCAT um, as the two previous speakers. And I think it was the last board meeting that the discussion had come up. And I found it interesting, within a week, students in my class had just been talking. Someone had said, Mrs. Potter, do you know why we don't have a resource officer in our schools? And I'm like, no, I, I don't know. I mean, do you think that there's a need? And they're like, well, this neighboring district, I won't say the name, that they have a resource officer on staff. And I was like, okay. And I, I really didn't have much to say about it. I thought, you know, we're, things are pretty good and safe in our schools. And, uh, and another the kid and another one popped up and they're like, oh yeah, but you know what happens at that school? They said, there's, there's uh, kids who are puking in the bathrooms by second period and then this other one starts talking, you know, they're sharing stories and of course it's all rumor and stuff like that. But it made me think about some of the stories I used to hear about Lodi before I started to work here. And I began working here in 2007, and I used to hear about some of those kind of stories of kids who would leave during lunch, get drunk, get high, or even shortly thereafter. Now, I know that, you know, there's, LCAT is probably just one piece of that puzzle that there are other pieces in that formula like excellent administrators, incredibly supportive parents, and just you know a really wonderful community. But I just found it interesting that that conversation came up within a week after hearing this. And I, I thought to myself, I wonder if LCAT is part of the reason. That other community, and then somebody has talked about this other community as well, they don't have a, a, an organization like LCAT. So it was just an interesting coincidence, perhaps, but I thought worthy of, of consideration. And then the last thing that I wanted to just very quickly say, how awesome it is that we had five awesome candidates for our school board and how much I appreciate all the work that all of you do. I sit at home and I watch the school board meeting and think to myself, how many hours you must prepare, hours and hours. And, um, and all of you doing it because you um, care so much about the education of our kids and uh, supporting our school. So thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have the consent agenda items. Items in this section will be adopted as a group unless a board member requests a specific item to be removed from the consent agenda and addressed separately. We have the approval of the minutes from last month and the we have under vouchers we have payroll checks, direct deposits, uh, account payable checks, ACH payments, and credit card payments. Under fundraising requests we have three of them, one for softball youth skills clinic, one for softball pizza sales, and one for the Interact Club for a broad stand. Under fundraising reports there are two, they're both for the cheerleading, one's for the raffle fundraiser and one is for the tailgate fundraiser. Under field trip requests, we have two. One is for the state FFA convention in June, and the other one is for the 2024 middle school Washington, D.C. trip. Under committee recommendations for approval, under policy committee, we have prescription medication form revisions and non-prescription over-the-counter medication form revisions. From the personnel committee, we have custodial and maintenance compensation, IT evaluation tool, and the national board recertification reimbursement. Under other, we have training equipment, 
winter sports summary, participation in guardian caps and high school football study, and start college now requests. There are two of them. Resignation and retirement. There are no retirements. Under resignation, we have middle school life skills teacher. We have two, actually three, middle school volleyball coach. <coughs> Lead maintenance, middle school Spanish teacher, swing crew, high school math teacher, elementary school OSC administrative assistant. Under co-curricular, there's a long list of middle school head track coach, German exchange co-coordinator, middle school forensics, volunteer softball coaches, there are two, under cheerleading, we have um, two at 50% for football, and then one volunteer. Under boys soccer, we have a head coach, and then two assistant coaches. Under cross country, we have a head coach at the high school, and a head coach at the middle school, and an assistant at the high school. Under football, we have a head coach, five assistants, two assistants at 50%, so five assistants at full time, two assistants at 50%, and then seven volunteers. Under girls' swim team, we have a head coach and three volunteers. Under tennis, we have a head coach and an assistant and a volunteer. Under vol volleyball, we have a head coach and then three assistants. And then we have a change uh, volunteer softball to JV assistant softball coach. <coughs> Under community program crew, we have one new lifeguard. Under regular staff, we have elementary OSC physician, I'm sorry, physical education teacher. We have high school Spanish teacher, eighth grade teacher, uh, IT youth apprentice, and a second grade long-term substitute teacher. Under personnel other, we have uh, leave without, request for leave without pay requests for 10 people. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented with the addition of the change of Carly Willard contract from volunteer to JV assistant coach and the approval of Interact Brought Stand Faith fundraiser. <clears throat> motion by Angie and a second by Barb. Any further discussion? Um, I'm just saying that I'm going to abstain because there's a lot of softball stuff in here and I volunteer for softball. Okay. So. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's a 6 to 0 with one statement. Communications. Administrative reports from LCAT. You're up first, Terry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mo switches these around, around, so switches around. Switches okay. around every month. All right. on our toes. So Narcan training will be provided in school um, staff core medical teams <clears throat> on April 4th. If anybody doesn't know what a core team is, I'm going to take a little... Here, I developed the core teams many, many years ago. And what they are is the first responders in school. And um, what I want to give them a shout out for is these are all teachers and staff that don't get paid extra to do this, but do all this extra training and then would respond in case of situation. So shout out to all the core team people. Um, teams on April 4th and April 6th, 2023, from 3.30 to 4 p.m. at the district office, a separate Narcan training will be held for community members sometime in April. The FAC group meet, uh, group meet with Lodi Mayor Groves Lloyd during their monthly meeting. Tobacco and vaping trends were discussed with Mayor Groves Lloyd along with the current ordinance for city parks. The group also spoke to the mayor about different event ideas they would like to see implemented that would give kids more support in the community. LCAT will do as um, YRBS presentation for the town of Lodi at their April meeting. And Paula and Adria are working on submitting a DPI, DPI AODA grant in the amount of $15,000. The grant is due on April 19th. LCAT will be holding their annual awards banquet in May. The school board is encouraging, um, encouraged to nominate groups or individuals who exhibit Lodi Pride and represent the values of Lodi Pride. All nominations are due by April 27th. Here is the link for the nomination form, and that can be found on the website. It's long. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, student services. Oh, board. I wanted to give you an update on um, the therapy dogs that we've had in school since passing our policy. Um, we have welcomed two therapy dogs and their handlers into our school so far this school year. Um, Dylan, whose pictures are on the top row, um, has joined us at the primary school. Um, one of the times that Dylan was in school was right after school break, and he provided, a, sorry, after spring break, and provided a lot of support for our students and staff during that time. Um, Maximus has been in the middle school a couple of times and he is at the, at the bottom row of pictures there and has spent time supporting students in Ms. Husman's class. 
Um, I also want to thank the Lions Club and their work with our school nurse, Janelle Sivum. Um, they work together to provide eyeglasses for one of our students in our school community. So their generosity is greatly appreciated. Um, also, we had the first of our three youth mental health first aid trainings last month. Um, I was very happy to have seven participants who wanted to become trainers. Um, the picture here is of our participants learning about common mental health challenges. Um, I will be hosting another training on Saturday, April 22nd here at district office. And the link there to register and have more information is provided here. And then you have one during the summer too. Yep, there's one on June 9th. And I just want to say that I did that training and it was super helpful. And any parent or anyone in the community that can do it, it would be very highly recommended. Primary school. Um, yes, good evening. So um, for preparing for the future, one of the things we're looking at right now is our schedules for next year. So um, teachers have had a chance to reflect on the current schedule right now and then think about some adjustments we can make for next year. Uh, some of the things that we're going to try to implement are having a designated SEL time in the morning for 20 to 30 minutes. Right now it's like 15 to 20. Um, so we just want to make sure that we have time to go through our responsive classroom, um, the morning meeting routines there. Uh, we're also looking at extending our math blocks. So that we, instead of having a 60 minute block, 75 minutes, so we can work on some of the math facts. And that's just some feedback we've gotten from the middle school. And kind of as we trickle down, we want to make sure we can be implementing those things there. Um, a shout out to all the families that contributed or purchased items from the book fair. The book fair allows us to purchase a birthday book for every student, um, and we earned almost about 7500 from that book fair. So obviously some of that goes towards purchasing books for that. Um, Mrs. Schrader, I mentioned that Dylan, our therapy dog, it has been an amazing experience. Mrs. Wilkie put a lot of time and energy into having this program, and I cannot express to you the amount of joy that it has brought and just support it is for the students. Somebody that maybe struggles coming into the door in the morning, and Mrs. Wilkie just says, would you like to walk Dylan in? And that student immediately walks into the school, to the classroom. So um, it's just been a really amazing addition to our school. I'm just super excited about that. Um, and then just a shout out to the families I've listed here. We have parent-teacher conferences. It's a great chance for us to connect with the parents and share the things that are going really well, as well as the next steps. Um, but the families here um, reached out, and they helped provide just a little thank you to the staff and provided uh, food for those long nights there. So just want to thank <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Anna, Anna. Yeah, Anna. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, the Lodi uh, High School students put on the play The Shining Lives, um, which happened from March 11th to March 12th. Their opening night was supposed to be March 10th, but due to the weather, it was canceled. Um, I went and saw it. It was great. Uh, one of my best friends was actually one of the leads, and my personal opinion, I thought she did great. So, <laughs> um, and then on March fifth, fifteenth, oh my goodness, um, the high school chamber choir performed with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra along with three other high schools. So that was also very cool. Uh, from the eighth to the twenty second, um, the high school also hosted ten students and four teachers from our sister school in Sufanburi in Thailand. So that was very cool. They came and presented to the Interact Club about some of the food that they had. So it was awesome to interact with some people from, you know, across the world. Um, over spring break, a lot of students, um, as you saw from the choir kids, either from either band or choir, went on the trip to Disney World and to Universal Studios in Florida. And normally that takes place every other year, but obviously due to COVID, they didn't have it the year before or the last time they're supposed to go. Um, so they did this year, which was great. And then on April 6th, um, the high school actually had its second job <coughs> fair, which was held in the gym. And um, all students of Lodi High School actually went and visited booths from local businesses to either get a summer job or look for jobs in the future. Um, and then the next thing I have is that uh, prom is coming up, actually this Saturday, at the high school and uh, where prom king and queen will be announced. So, yeah. You're always looking for chaperones. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I also went through the play, and the acting that was done in the play, I fully mm -hmm. agree with you, it was, it was stellar. It was yes. just, you felt like those was, were the people, not the intense. actors. Yeah, it was and they so did. good. So great. Yeah. It was really good. It was amazing. I, I went to the Milwaukee Symphony, and it was beautiful. 
was just a beautiful show. Yeah, I'm sure the sound. And, and, the, and the theater is gorgeous. It was just awesome. I talked to the students and I said, what was it like to actually play with pros, right? Where you said this and it just happened and they were like, oh my God, it was so amazing just to <laughs> like yeah. drive in a Maserati or something. <laughs> Lamborghini. Um, sorry, I've lost my place. Uh, elementary OSC. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so just a couple highlights. First of all, we continue on with our literacy uh, program adoption uh, process. And so we have our last uh, presentation tomorrow. So we have our last um, program presenting to us, and then we will um, continue on with our process and, and make a decision from there. Uh, I did include uh, our essentials that our team has uh, developed to kind of guide our process. Um, and then also forward exam is up and rolling, and so we had a great kickoff to that, and, and families have been doing great, our, our students have been doing great in classrooms. Uh, we, we really appreciate the support families have given us, helping kids be set up for success, making sure they get sleep, and and breakfast and everything that they've done as well. Um, just some pictures of different highlights of ways that we've tried to highlight learning um, in, our, in our school. Um, so OSC Project Night happened. Those of you who were there uh, got to experience that. We've also had different uh, opportunities to celebrate different milestones throughout the year, uh, Pi Day obviously, and um, some different writing that's been happening in third grade. And we did have a four-legged visitor as well. Um, and then uh, Amy and I have really been working on trying to figure out an action plan for um, our community connections. And so I kind of outlined that there. A big piece of that is just really being able to help with the transition. Um, we understand anytime you have to transition from building to building for students and for families, um, it can be a little bit of a process. And so that's something that we're looking um, at trying to just be clear about and making sure we're setting students and families up for success with that. And then at the end, I just included some highlights of some of the amazing staff that I get to work with. Can, can you keep doing that? Because, I mean, I've been here 10 years, I still don't know the staff, and this was really nice to get a personal note from them. Yes, it was really nice. To see their faces. Yeah. And the other thing about OSC Project Night, which you full know, know full well, is there are 80 separate projects. So each kid is doing their own project, which is a nightmare for those poor teachers. <laughs> They're not all doing the same thing. They're, I mean, it's all under the same blanket theme, but at the same time. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience for me as a first time. First time, yes. So, it's crazy. Uh, to walk in one day and the whole learning space is completely changed. And, um, and then to see um, students taking ownership of their learning, yes. anytime you get to see that is pretty exciting um, for anyone involved in education. And then listening to them. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know, what, I don't even need to look, I just to look up and whoever's smiling at me is the person who goes next. <laughs> <laughs> Except you don't want to go. Don't, don't smile. Yeah. Go Middle school. <laughs> Whether I'm smiling or not, I think I'm on that. So. <laughs> um, so good evening, board. Um, first thing I always like to highlight is our students of the month. This stu the students of this February were nominated for initiative. Um, and students that take initiative take control of opportunities that help set them up for success. And like all, a lot of schools around the state, um, we are starting with our forward testing uh, starting tomorrow. Um, so 6th and 7th grade will be assessed in both math and language arts, and then 8th grade will be assessed also in science and social studies in addition to math and language arts. So that's going to take place over the next couple of weeks. Um, I want to say congratulations to Emily Tenbarge. Um, she's an 8th grade student um, for her recent performance with the Wisconsin Youth Sym Symphony Orchestra's Philharmonia Orchestra. I got that out. I was worried about that. Uh, so we're just really proud of her as a middle schooler being a part of that orchestra and just really look forward to her high school career in music as well. Um, and then we had a field trip for our eighth grade to Washington, D.C. Um, so in March, 70 students and chaperones loaded two buses to Lod or from Lodi Middle School parking lots and set off to Washington, D.C. They left at 5 a.m. In addition to that, it was daylight savings time and everybody showed up on time. So that was uh, a really good thing. Um, and the students visited many memorials, the Vietnam, Korean, Lincoln, FDR, Martin Luther King Jr., Air Force, World War II, and Jefferson memorials, as well as other museums. Um, and I want to give a big thanks to all the chaperones, Vince Brynig, Corey Clemens, Patty Heinzman, Melissa Walsh, and Sienna Kelworts for chaperoning this. And I want to give a big thank you to Amy Christensen. Amy Christensen has been organizing this for... Uh, I think maybe like five or six years. Um, this started like when I was in high school. They went to Washington, D.C. with Jerry Hilliker, and then <laughs> Mr. Joe Jelinek took it over from there, and he has passed it on to Amy, and she does an awesome job being 
Um, she's just excellent with organization, but she also does a really great job being proactive and setting the kids up for success and setting expectations for things like the bus, the hotels, uh, when they're in like the Arlington Cemetery and like really teaching kids like how will you behave at these different events. So we really appreciate all of the effort that she put in. Um, we also had 13 students that traveled to UW Platteville's pioneering for pioneering your future women in STEM day. Um, so participants learned about STEM careers and were mentored by women college students and faculty to learn about and actually do some different STEM prof uh, what different STEM professionals do as their careers. Students were also able to have a tour of the UW Platteville campus um, and really just made some nice connections with some careers. And then a community connection we had was we had a serial drive on March 7th and I want to thank Michelle Howe for organizing that. So as a school we were able to collect 370 boxes of cereal and then we actually lined them up like dominoes all the way, didn't make it all the way around. I think Michelle said we would have needed like 580. So we had like two thirds of the way around. We had a big countdown, tipped them over um, as a way to celebrate our donation to Reach Out Lodi. So it was a really great event and thanks to Michelle Howe for organizing that. That's all from middle school. So Young Women in STEAM, was Michelle behind that or who was? Well, yes, uh, Michelle did chaperone them uh, on the trip. She she's, uh, plays a big role. She's uh, a power uh, uh -huh. um, how, how were those students picked? Are they, were they self-volunteer? Yep. Okay. yep, we just uh, we just made an announcement uh, and sent out information and then we had 13 students that decided they wanted to give an opportunity. It's the perfect time in middle school because that's when it's yeah. not cool to be in STEM and so for supporting that, that's great. Um, high school. Um, my Thai guests and Michelle's Thai guests were actually able to go to that conference and they were very much impressed by it. They thought it was pretty cool. Wow. And both being females and seeing our girls in action was pretty wow. cool. So um, I want to start with uh, student recognition. Uh, senior AJ Tritt along with his father Tom Tritt. Um, Tom is the owner of Patio Pleasures and um, AJ was able to uh, celebrate Youth Apprenticeship Day at the Capitol with his dad. So AJ showed an impressive communication skills while speaking to legislator, legislators about his journey in youth apprenticeship uh, and his future plans to become a lineman through further apprenticeships. So he was able to go to the Capitol and do that, which was awesome. Um, I have four classes that I, that I have in the report here, but I want to highlight two of them. And the first one is Field Ecology, which was started by one of our science teachers, Leo Olson. It's been a great experience for many of our students. They are able to basically do science outside um, on a regular basis. Uh, a couple things about the class that I think are really uh, pretty cool. Students in the class have collected data on tree species at the school forest and conducted forest health inventory, looking at metrics of tree growth, health, diversity, invasive species. And they closed March with a guest lecture from Dr. Tim Van Dielen, who came to our class to show about his research on elk reintroduction in Wisconsin, which I think is really neat. They also spent some time in the Lodi Marsh right after it rained a ton. And they were wearing waders, and there's lots of pictures of, <laughs> pictures of them basically up to their waist in mud. Some of the kids had to call home and get clothing uh, sure. sent to the high school. So it's been a really good experience for our kids to get out there and see some things. The other one I wanted to talk a little bit about is Unified Physical Education, which is run by Michelle Pauls. It's a great experience, not just for some of our special needs kids, but also for some of our, our regular ed kids that get to go, and they just recently spent some time at Badger Gymnastics. They wanted to thank Miss Molly, who was a great instructor, and photographer, EA substitute, Mr. Peyton Breinick, who was happened to be there at EA on that day and took some great pictures. Um, you heard about our Thailand experience, and I'm not going to read through this, but Paula Tun and her husband Pete had an opportunity to host two Thai students, and she wrote a testimonial about it, and I think it really it's a great way to express why this is an important program and why it's it's such a great experience for people that get to host, people that get to travel, or students that just get to be buddies. And that means they get to kind of walk around with some of those students and go on some of the field trips. So you can read through that. Um, we do have the pre-ACT tomorrow for our ninth and 10th graders, so we have our three hour late start. And um, there's been a lot of preparation that has taken place. It's an electronic test, so they'll be using their Chromebooks to get through that. I wanted to thank a few people, first of all from the tech department, Tyler Potter and Matt Horan, um, Grant Lemke and Josie Kirkpatrick, our, our school counselors, Elise Kearney, Jason Marshall and Nick. Um, uh, so we've done a lot of planning, gotten our teachers ready uh, for that test tomorrow. So we're looking forward to that. Um, Anna talked a little bit about the, uh, the choir singing at the symphony orchestra. 
there was a, a note or an email that was sent to me, um, and you can read it from a grandparent that um, is not from Lodi, who was able to experience um, the symphony and experience our kids and other schools there. And I'll let you read that letter, but it, it basically talks about how great of a community we have. It's not just about teachers, it's not just about kids, but it's about the adults in this, in this uh, town, the school board, everybody, um, and making it a great learning environment for everybody. So I'll let you read through that. Um, I was pretty moved by it. I was glad to get that email. So I kind of compared that experience to like the state championships of choir. It was just, Barb talked about it a little bit, it was just amazing. Um, so I'm, getting, I'm glad our kids got to do that. There's some information about the Visual Arts Classic and some of the students that are going to participate that in art. I'll let you read through it. Mock trial was mentioned last month, but um, it was right near the end of the month. And it was mentioned by someone that was here, Jade Homewood and Ebony Louis King, who were Outstanding Witness Award winners. And I wanted to feature them a little bit this month. It was just a huge honor for two of our kids to get um, recognized statewide because of their efforts. So mention them. Prom is this weekend, and like Mr. Bronick said, if you'd like to chaperone, feel free to stop by. Um, the Grand March is at 10 o'clock. Um, you can see the names of the uh, kids that are on prom court this year. So that's happening again this Saturday. We do have a February Students in the Month that you can read through. Congratulations to them. And then lots of band and choir trip uh, photos. You can see a uh, picture on the first page when they were leaving that morning. Um, it was pretty dicey uh, for them to drive out of our parking lot, but they made it, and once they got past Janesville, I think it was fine. So I wasn't too bad. And then there are some pictures. They did have an opportunity. It wasn't just them going to the park and enjoying that. They did have studio recording workshops with Disney Imagination Campus staff, which was pretty cool for them. And then finally on the last page are just a bunch of pictures from our post-practice ACT. Um, featured Mr. Pohl at the top there. <laughs> he did not take the practice. He wouldn't look like that if he did. And that is the high school. Thank you. Thank you. And the curriculum. Um, so the first one on here is in reference to the 22-23 assessment of reading readiness reimbursement. So annually, districts who are meeting this particular state statute and also the requirements of this grant are able to apply for the reading readiness reimbursement, which covers the cost of the reading assessment that you would have to give that meets these stipulations for grades um, 4K through 2. We do meet those requirements, and so annually this is a grant that I apply for, and this year we qualified for $2,281.40 of reimbursement coming back to us from the state. Um, last summer, we had a program that we leveraged some of our ESSER three funds to kind of put the foundational components of that program in place for summer. Um, and that is the For Love of Reading program, and that really comes out of, that's a brainchild of, of Deb Volk, one of our primary school teachers. It was incredibly successful. Last year, we had 149 primary school students participate in the summer reading program. Um, with 81 of those students reading over a thousand minutes last summer. It was just incredibly successful. And uh, Deb Volk has a partner this year in Grace Shira, and they'll be looking to not only have that program occurring for students with the primary school, but also elementary school students as well will be able to participate. So we're really looking forward to year two, and we already have students and families signing up for that summer program. An added benefit is that um, those enrollments will also be able to be added to our um, enrollments for summer school to get some reimbursement back from the state around that. So long-term investment there. And then lastly, uh, just an update <coughs> on middle school math. So we started a journey back in 21-22 of um, really establishing a vision for middle school math. Uh, working with the Math Institute of Wisconsin, talking to other districts, looking at resources, similar to what we're doing right now, we're going through at the um, elementary school level for reading. And this school year, we were doing a full year pilot of the Ready Math program. We got some great feedback from our educators. We got some uh, educators have, have found that that is a program that, that's rigorous, that ha checks a lot of the boxes that they have uh, within their vision, um, and our are looking to use that program moving forward 
tailoring it to the needs of, of their students. There's so much to it, and they're still learning the best how to use the program, and it's going to come together this summer and um, spend some extra time together um, kind of figuring out exactly how they want to use the various components moving forward. They feel good about the results we're seeing from that right now on our local assessments and, and moving forward with that. So that is highlighted there as well. Thank you. District Administrator Report. Yeah, I just have a couple items. One is the Outstanding Impact Awards are on Monday, April 17th. Uh, it's a great way for us to honor our students, but also honor the staff that have outstanding impact upon the lives of our students. Um, so thanks to the Lodi Rotary Club for partnering with the district to put on this event for the last 30, this will be 32 years. Uh, Washington, D.C. trip's been mentioned. Um, uh, Amy Christensen does a phenomenal job. You hear the word Lodi Pride constantly, and our kids represent our our community with Lodi pride when they're out there. You see some other schools and, and, and how sometimes students are behaving and our kids were phenomenal. Um, and when they do start to veer off a little bit, they, you know, a, a little reminder, they come back. So um, it was great and thank you to the board for allowing me to go and help chaperone that trip. <coughs> um, and then uh, we had an election we'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, I want to thank again Barb for her service. Welcome Adam back to the board for another three years. And welcome our new board member, Sarah Ramish, um, to the board. Uh, being on a board is a difficult job, and I appreciate everyone, I appreciate everyone who is willing to run and willing to serve. So thank you. Um, the Outstanding Impact Awards for board members, if you can make that, make that, because it's really, really great to hear directly from students about what teachers are doing and teachers about what students, it's just, it's a tear kind yeah, of Yeah, and the nice thing about it is, or the thing that we, I try to remind people, because I get to MC it, um, is these are just a representative. Oh, of course, these are of These course. are 10 or 15 kids, and these staff have had outstanding impact on those, but there are other kids who other teachers and other adults in this community have had an outstanding impact on them. So it just gives you a, a, a reminder of how, yeah. impa how impactful the adults are on our students' lives. <clears throat> And then I'd also like to thank the people who ran, right? So Julie, right, for running, and Sarah, Susan, who's not here, and Barb. It, it's hard to run for election. It's hard to be on the board. It's hard to do those things. And thank you all for doing that stuff. It's not easy. Uh, the regular agenda, COVID mitigation. Yeah, the district's uh, COVID advisory team met April 4th and reviewed our current COVID illness numbers, our current COVID-19 mitigation strategy, our other respiratory illness uh, numbers. Uh, the committee is recommending no changes at this current time. Um, they are going to look at, um, they've asked the school nurses to put together some um, ideas of how we would go about notifying uh, parents and families next year, not just for COVID, but for other respiratory illnesses. Because we, again, it's one of those things that the lemonade that came out of COVID, like, We've now been able to, to share that information and parents have been able to make decisions about their kids' health. Um, so we want to continue to do that, but we want to make sure it's still doable. So that's something we'll continue to do. The other conversation I have with the Medical Advisory Committee meeting is how often do we want to continue to meet, right? Um, and we decided, um, unless the board has other ideas, that we would meet again in May. Um, and that will probably be the last time that we meet, unless you know something comes up and we need to pull that group back together. But, um, we just thought we'd go through, I'll finish the school year out, and go from there. Well, yeah. and then um, Dr. Chow continued, no, mm -hmm. our medical, our personal medical advisor she for our school to will be keep your, on going. Mm -hmm. Yes, we always designate a medical right. advisor every year. Right, school nurses. Dr. Chow. I think that we should put together some sort of recognition for them also. Yeah, they've given up a lot of time, a lot of time. absolutely, um, to, 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 for this community. All right, thank you. Okay, funding. Yeah, so the Board of Education. Go so ahead. Christy and I are going to recuse ourselves from this, and so we're going to leave the room, and Angie's going to take this part. Right. Um, I just wanted to say, yeah. though, before I recuse myself from that, that um, it was just so that everybody in here and the board has a full understanding of why I'm recusing myself. Um, my daughter, as we all know, my high school daughter is on the FACT board, which is a state board. For LCAT and um, after we had had our initial conversation and my initial position was put out there um, the comment was made to I believe it was Vince or Adam or 
both maybe at the same time. Well, if Adam is gone, Kristen needs to be gone too. Um, and I just wanted to say to our community that that just feels icky. Um, it feels like a tit for tat. It feels like a divisive um, thing to do um, to our board and to our community. I understand the position of, I'm going to butcher the word, non-pecuniary. Um, Nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> um, gain. I wouldn't ever want to be unethical in that way. I wouldn't ever want to put my daughter in a position where she would have to come off of a board. Um, so I will recuse myself for it, but I really hope as a community um, we can maybe stop the back and forth and the fighting on all sides of it um, and let elected officials make decisions that you put us in these seats to make. Um, so that's all. That was very well said. Yes, thank you. Thank, you. thank you. That was very good. Very good. Okay. All right, yeah, <laughs> so uh, LCAT, uh, the Board of Education discussed LCAT uh, funding, uh, well, prior to that, uh, I went through the Facility Finance Committee in February, then came to the Board uh, February 2023 meeting. Um, the Board did not make a decision at the time, but decided to create an ad hoc committee. Um, with the request, uh, understanding that this committee would make a recommendation to the full board at this uh, board meeting. The, the, uh, the board members who volunteered to be on the ADCOC committee were Heather, uh, Scott, and Terry. Um, so we met on March 8th at the district office. Um, at the beginning of the meeting, the four board members were present. Heather, uh, Barron, Scott Bilsey, Terry, uh, and Angie, along with administration, some community members. Adam, I know, was there for a while, was in and out uh, and left. Uh, the members of the ad hoc committee invited Angie to be part of the committee since she was in attendance. Um, I'd say I recommended against that uh, since the committee had been set by the board um, and also made an even number for the committee. But um, the committee decided that they wanted to move forward with a four member committee. Um, a presentation was shared at that committee meeting, uh, which is attached in board docs. We're not going to review it again. I uh, just reviewed the following areas the purpose, mission, values of LCAT, and why did it start? And I think there was some powerful conversation. Um, uh, from uh, Mr. Ricks, who was there talking about, you know, the purpose behind and why mm -hmm. LCAT started um, in this community. Uh, There's some discussion about LCAT programming, uh, some YRBS data that was shared, um, talked about the differences between LCAT and PARC, similarities, a review of the full LCAT budget, uh, and then a review of the questions that were submitted by all the by board members beforehand, and those are linked in there as well. Um, the committee was also presented with an updated budget. Uh, which is also included. That budget included a new grant that was gotten between that February meeting and that March, uh, which reduced the cost of LCAT to the district from approximately $96,000 to $61,000. Um, after that presentation and discussion, uh, a motion was made by Terry Hagg, seconded by Heather Barron, to afford to the full board to fund LCAT for the 23-24 school year, and that motion carried 3-0 with Mr. Bielsey abstaining from the vote. So oh, I have a lot to say, and I'm sorry I'm going to hog the floor for a few minutes just because I wanted to write all this down because I'm very good at getting sidetracked, and then I go home and I say, we did say that. So I wanted to just read what I wanted to say because I don't want to forget anything that I wanted to express. I apologize for the long letter, and I encourage fellow board members to jot down comments or questions as I'm reading this so we can discuss further, but I ask to just let me finish my thoughts first. I'd like to start out by saying thank you to all the people that took the time to let me and the rest of the board know all of your thoughts, input, opinions, and experiences with LCAT. I always love hearing from our community. We as board members have to take the good and the bad and always need to hear different perspectives. This board is here to serve the school and our students, and we always need to be hearing from everyone that is involved. With that said, as board members, I can say with confidence that we are all here with the best intentions and what we feel is the best for our students. So please never assume the worst when it comes to how we make our decisions. I can speak for myself when it comes to me wanting more info always about any decision that we have to make. By me asking for input, I will always have the best intentions behind it and never am trying to be biased in the way I'm asking for info. Even though I am human and will have a personal opinion on things, I will always be open to listening to all sides and will never disregard any position that people feel. 
Obviously, I will never make everyone happy, but please always understand that I am making a decision that I feel is best for our students. If you can keep that in mind, we can have a lot better conversations and understanding of each other. I've been doing as much research as I can about LCAT, and I have been asking for input from our community. I was very grateful for Angie to request more info about LCAT, and I appreciate Vince and Brent researching and making a presentation, and Demo for finding a time to present the info. Paula also needs some recognition for being bombarded with questions and answering as best she can. I'm hoping for a different method and a better solution the next time something like this needs to be addressed. I just feel that that info could have been presented better so people would have felt better informed. For example, I was not aware of how intertwined LCAT and our district was way before LCAT had asked our district for money. So when Vince tried to intercept at the board meeting, it makes a lot more sense now why he was trying to explain things. If that was known from the get-go, that interaction might have gone differently. In my opinion, LCAT seems to only give info when asked, and I feel that if you don't ask the right questions, you don't get all the info. I'm trying to be honest about things and give a perspective of someone that is outside of LCAT and someone that is trying to find out info about them. I also don't find it unreasonable for the board to request LCAT to get funding from other sources, and yet we were met with some irritation about that. Luckily, LCAT did find some funding, which is a win-win for all. The biggest takeaway that I have heard about LCAT is the connections in Lodi. I think we can all agree that connections in a small community are huge for success. I also heard from several past students that appreciated LCAT getting them involved in the community and sparking interest in their future plans as an adult. Again, no one can deny that those things are very beneficial to our youth. The cons about LCAT from what I heard is that a lot of people are unaware of what they do and the proficiency of how they do things. So in my opinion, if we want to fund LCAT under Fund 80, then the community has to be more involved in every aspect of LCAT. So for me to support funding LCAT, I would need to see these things. Number one, meetings are open to all. From what I have heard, again, never really getting a straight answer, is the meetings used to be open, and then they were closed to the public. That cannot happen at all if taxpayers are paying for this program. And I find it appalling if this is true, considering more minds working together is always better, especially when it comes to our youth. Although I want to hear from public officials, teachers, drug and mental health counselors, I want LCAT to hear thoughts, concerns, opinions from the parents, students, and community members that might not have one of the accepted titles. I want to hear from the people living the real life problems that LCAT is addressing. I would also like these meetings held in the district office if possible for them to be live streamed so the community can hear what is being discussed. Number two, I would like LCAT to give the school board monthly reports of their spending and their budget. I would prefer to not put this on Brent, but to have Paula do this. Paula is the one that is actually running LCAT and knows the day-to-day -day procedures. Nothing complicated, just for the board and the public to know where the money is going towards. Number three, I would like to see more real-life education. Stats and surveys are great, but I want our students to hear real-life solutions to problems. Obviously, the best is to tell kids to not abuse alcohol or use drugs. But the reality is that our youth will most likely at some point in their life come into contact with these problems. Not necessarily personally, but could know someone that is suffering. So I want our youth to know the signs of alcohol and or drug abuse. I want our youth to be able to recognize the signs of an overdose. And I want our youth to know what to do in that situation. I agree that this will not be a pretty subject, but needs to happen. Number four. Although Vince stated at the ad hoc meeting that speakers coming in to do presentations do not work. I disagree with that to a point, and I feel that LCAT is being hypocritical when they say that stat. Considering Stephen Riggs told the story of why he started LCAT, his neighborhood kids were abusing drugs, and it was shocking, it was heartbreaking, and he couldn't stand by and do nothing. I was touched and could see why he had the drive to do this. The reason I was inspired was because Stephen is in my community and is most likely talking about families that I personally know. If Stephen was in California or Chicago and not in my community, that probably wouldn't have hit home for me. So by saying that speakers talking to our youth doesn't work, I believe LCAT is talking about speakers that are not from our community. I would like to see other fellow students, past students, parents, and or anyone in our community that has been affected by issues that LCAT is addressing. I want the true stories, and I realize that some of those will not always have a happy ending. Number five, I want more resources for our community. Again, keep pushing the narrative of no drug use, 
alcohol abuse, mental health issues. But I want more resources for the people that are already struggling, the ones that just got home from rehab and trying to adjust to home life again, resources for people that may have just gotten in trouble with the law, maybe more communication with the county and see if we are utilizing all of the resources. For LCAT to continue in our community, it has to be open to everyone and not just the select few that are making decisions. I appreciate everything that LCAT has done and I appreciate anyone that has been involved with LCAT. I believe the fundamentals of LCAT is a great concept and I believe more could be done and done more proficiently. I do not have all the answers of how this could be done better, but that is why LCAT needs to work with everyone so everyone can benefit from this program. In closing, I would like to make a motion to fund LCAT for one year with the expectations of hearing from community, uh, sorry, expectate, yes, of hearing from community members from all different walks of life, giving monthly budget reports, working on having more resources available, and being able to give reports to the School Board of Education, all the program and resources given to our youth and students. And I would like reevaluation after one year of funding. Sorry, guys, that was a lot, I know. I had to get it out. <laughs> I don't think those meetings have ever been closed. I think it was always there for people to come. Again, I never got a answer there, on it. There's yeah. a motion. First of all, there's a motion oh, sorry, on the sorry, table. Sorry. So either someone has to second it yep, or yep. before we do a discussion. Mm -hmm. Did you want to read the, the exact well, and I, I did that motion just, I guess I should have probably waited till we discussed it more. I guess I just kind of kept reading. Right. So well, I don't know if we don't get a second it. from it right away, yeah. maybe we discuss, mm -hmm. and then we can, you know, if you want to yeah. amend the motion or make another motion, I mean, we, I think we, we understand, because you're able to read all that, which is great, I um, I'm sorry. that we understand what you're thinking and, yeah. you know, where your thought process went. Right. Um, so we didn't get a second, so why don't we discuss further, and then we can make another, you know, someone yeah. can make another motion, and we can see what, um, what to include in that motion. So, um, I, I just want to say that um, as much as I've always supported LCAT um, and had some, some involvement with it, um, I, I did have questions about um, how the money was being used, how, it was how the budget was decided, what accountability was in place. I just didn't know. And so um, the ad hoc committee meeting was, I think, really great. I think the members who are there, I appreciate them letting me join in to listen and learn. And um, I, I agree that with you, Heather, that um, I didn't get all the information I needed for that from those initial presentations to the board, which I think, you know, triggered some controversy about, you know, what is LCAT doing? And so I don't think that's any particular person's fault, but I will say like the ad hoc com committee meetings I felt were great, that we were able to really dig into it, really ask those questions. I feel very comfortable after that meeting about is this a wise use of taxpayer funds? And I, I will say that, you know, I wasn't sure going into the, into the meeting and I'm, I'm glad to have gotten quite a few answers about how, how, res how the responsibility for that money and services are, you know, potentially going to be handled if we fund it. I appreciate everything that you shared. I do think there's room to build in some accountability as far as budget and things. Some of it, I, I don't know exactly how it would get recorded, for lack of a better word. Like, I don't know how you keep track of who comes to the meetings from different walks of life without taking some kind of personal information from people. Again, that was because I never really got an answer. People were saying it was open, people were saying it was closed, and I, it was just like, so that was part of that too. Maybe it is always open, and I don't know that at this it's point. It's never been closed. Never, okay. ever, ever. And, and I, sometimes that con, um, confusion might come because there are committees that have met, and from the open meetings, committees have been put together. But even those were open. We have never right. had a closed meeting. And I, if, if I may, just the for the I, I think as we cleared up in, in the, the committee meeting is that for ten years prior to last year we were under a funder, federal grant which we reported every penny that was sent that would never that I, to my knowledge went to the board even when I was on the board but but we kept the books and so and we had to account to auditors from the federal government so it's not like we weren't doing right things with the money I just think that's an important thing to state. 
Um, I do think, as I mentioned in the committee meeting, that this transition year has been a learning experience for all of us. We went from being under a federal grant, under federal rules, to school district, and we admittedly should have handled that differently. I think even Brent and Vince would say, we, if we could do it all over again, we would do it differently. So we apologize for that. But the meetings have always been open. Um, back in the day when people actually read the newspapers, we posted them in the newspapers. Um, Every month, there was a uh, report given to the school board. Most of the time, I gave them. Uh, but even prior to that, I think I went to many board meetings. So I, I think I understand what you're saying, and I get why you're saying that it's, it's, it's hard in this community to get information out about things. But I just want to make sure that everybody understands that there was nothing nefarious going on here, that we did everything that was required and then some, and we are a community organization. So... It was always open to the community. What are we, in our bylaws, I believe it says that <coughs> team members are the community. Is actually what it says in the bylaws. So, I, I just want to clarify. I never suspected anything to fire. No, I didn't think budget anybody did. Wise. I just think, right, like that's a good checks and balances for us to put into place. Absolutely. And um, I think it's important we do that too. I'm, I'm supportive of Elka. I, mean, I moved here in 2010, and the newspaper was not pleasant to read, and I was scared for my kids. and. The district was not in a great shape looking at financials at that point either. And I was like, well, what did we just move into? Like, this town is in bad shape and dying. So, and I'm now I'm so proud that my kids have gone to school here and live in this town. I think it's a great place to raise kids. Um, <coughs> my only suggestion would be if there's room to look at funding it for at least two years rather than one. Because we are talking about people's jobs and it's hard to commit to a job that you have to look at possibly being ended year after year after year. If, if I was in that position, I, I would need a little bit more stability. In my commit. mind, I thought we'll do a year just because it is kind of a new thing for our district. And then in a year, I would hope if you know we're all happy with it, we would do it, a longer. It's kind of tricky because it is, there's the, the grant situation is uncertain. We don't know a year from now, is it going to be 60000 Is it going to be $70,000? Um, so, but also, yeah, I don't want people it to be like on a knife edge. Like, I don't know, every year as we have this discussion. I mean, each, each board is different, too, of course. Mm -hmm. So that puts, um, it just throws a wrench into it. It's a lot, it's different than other programs that are not primarily grant funded. Yeah, but it's just uncertain. I don't know what to do about that, honestly. I mean, I would be inclined to say, Two years, but um, I, I understand the you know the desire yeah. to have. Some. I just feel like the first year I think it would be good, and then after that I would feel like after we see a year of how everything went, then I, in my mind, if it's all good, we would definitely do a longer version. I mean that's my thought, but obviously it would be up to everyone else too. I'm just going to say that many of the things that you asked for have been in our minutes lately and would be out to the public because right in this is also the budget and what's there. And that's been something that... We got the budget, but we got supplies. You know, I mean, what right. is that? But I mean, me? to build on to that. Yeah. You're starting. That's yeah. starting. So. Would, um, for people that want to look. I was going to say, well, Terry already goes to the meetings and gives us a report. Would we want her to con to provide more detail? Right, because there's always a report. But I mean, mm -hmm. you're asking for some <laughs> sure. more detail in the report. Probably more of just like spending would be the biggest. Because yeah, your reports obviously always tell us kind of what's happening. Everything that's happening. I think that you have to understand a little bit too. Like when we get the school budget, like there's a category of like supplies. Like we don't have the teachers list every single like pencil, crayon, piece of paper that they're fine either, right? Like, there's a little bit of understanding what supplies I feel like is. you could break it down a little bit more, though. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, I'm not looking at it right now. I want to say what. Yeah, it's in here if you want to go to it. Because that way we see it all at once. And budget I mean, breakdown. You know, other expenses, you know, 2700 Other expenses, 12000 I mean, that just... That's a lot of money for just other. So I would like just a little bit more, just like I said, just so then we all kind of know where it's going. And, a, and part of the monthly um, report. 
And I guess my question would be, if it is now in the district, like crew is under our website. So web page hosting, would that be something that would not have to be, would that just be under us? Would that be, I mean, I know it's only $289, but that's $289, you know, like, so I guess that would just be stuff like that too, where if it is actually all under the district now, would it be more, you know, some of that would be included in the district more instead of just being out of your guys' pockets? Yeah, because you still have the county grant that will stay. Yes. Yep. That's so not gone away. LCAT's not 100% under the umbrella of the district. <clears throat> I mean, they're funded partly by other, mm -hmm. should, more by other grants. So, I guess that's yeah, so maybe, maybe not <laughs> either here or there. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll speak. Dovetailing <clears throat> on Angie's point. I've learned a lot more about LCAT since this process started even just a few months ago. Tonight's the first time I've heard anybody from LCAT state that maybe things could have been done differently based on previous discussions, so I do appreciate hearing that. Uh, I will let people that took the time to write emails to the board know that I read every email that came in, and I will say that the overwhelming majority of emails that I believe they were addressed to all on the board mm -hmm. received were in support of continuing to fund LCAT, uh, particularly when the chief of police in the city of Lodi takes time to write an email and offer his input and his suggestion, I'm going to take heed of that and value that that opinion not greater than anybody else's but I'm going to listen to what what the chief has to, to say because he obviously uh, knows a lot so I appreciate you bearing with us bearing with us through this process that hasn't always been pleasant for you but again kind of dovetailing on Angie's point, I don't apologize for asking some of the questions that we've been asking because it's a big pivot for you guys to go from essentially being self-funded to now asking the school to, to fund, uh, at least partially fund your program. I will tell you from myself moving forward, I'll continue to ask you to continue to search out additional alternative funding sources not just from the school district, but trying to involve the whole community. So if that involves the city, that involves the city. I stated that before. Uh, Mr. Ricks, at the last meeting, you mentioned to my point about <coughs> hoping to get more involvement in, this, in the school with the school now being a major funder of the program and you men mentioning the mentoring program, which I thought was excellent. So I'll continue to follow up on that in the future and want to learn more about what LCAT is doing, not just in the community, but with your new programs or initiatives designed directly for the school as well. So again, I appreciate that it's not been an easy <coughs> process, but appreciate you bearing with us or me through it. I appreciate your thoughts, Heather, and everyone else on the board. Well, um, do you want to make a? Do you want to make a? Somebody want to make a motion? Somebody mm -hmm. want to read the motion? We feel comfortable with asking for more detail from Terry's report from LCAT. Um, Heather, I think you specifically talked about that. Um, getting I more guess, information each month? Yeah, and the question, you guys said that the meetings are open. Do you ever invite certain people, but then the meetings are still open, or is it just open, whoever wants to show up? So we have an email list that we always send the invites out to, and now they're posted publicly like all, right, like all, like all school, school board, district like meetings. All, yeah. Okay, okay. But we do have a group that has been coming for all these years, and we always invite them. Just because yes. they're like on the email yes. list? Okay. By your department. 
police department. Yep. And there's clinic, a clinic. The medical people come. Do you guys work with like Columbia County and Dane County? So, so do they ever come too? Or yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll also say I appreciate you getting that extra funding to take the cost of the district down from ninety-six thousand to sixty-one. And you're waiting to hear on another one, right? We're in the process of, of yeah. There's there's a AODA grant that um, Adrian and I are working on that's due next week actually. So the, and that's fifteen thousand. Yeah. Awesome. So, and that one is, has a pretty quick turnaround, so we should know, I feel like, by, by summer if, if that one. So is the amount of the 61000 or roughly, that's what it is right now, is it a request for the school district to fund up to that amount? And if this other comes through, of, we'll just say $15,000, and the district would be funding $46,000? Is that how it would work, or is it not that simple? I, I don't think it's that simple. I think that, that we need to stick with the 61000 The The DPI's grant um, it is going to benefit the school district of Lodi much more than it will affect um, LCAT salaries, if that makes sense. Because to have a DPI grant, you have to have DPI certifications and all of that that, that, that Brian and I might not necessarily have, but other people in this district have. And so the, we will help with the work because it's an AODA grant, but it won't help with our salaries. Does that make sense? So, so every grant has requirements. Yes. Right. So, and sometimes those requirements are distribute, you know, uh, uh, first aid training. Sometimes it's, we're just gonna pay some salaries. Sometimes it's, we want a specific program. So it depends on the grant um, on, and how they define the grant. Like the federal grant was you will do prevention however you want to do it they had requirements that we had to meet but it was pretty much open and mm -hmm. here's the money for it some of these other grants are more specific of we want to see this specific program done which means that although that money comes into the district it may go to a specific program and then not offset salaries or supplies or, or those types of things okay I understand so I think it's, it's much of that money that can be used for that We'll, so it won't be that it's just 61 at the end of the year we're going to spend 61 if we get you know a 5,000 grant here or we get something this uh, you know uh, donated or something then that money will go back into the district and just it won't be spent so if we were to entertain the possibility of funding for two years but we would it be like two years for 61,000 or like how like you know what I mean like the grants that we have currently we hope that they will continue. Again, the one that we just received was a J uh, grant because of the dual settlement. And so I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned this to all of you or just the committee, but so what we have learned about that grant is as long as Jewel doesn't go bankrupt, they will continue to, to um, they will continue to have money because they have to pay in to this, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so to me, two change. years would not look that different. But again, I can't control grant funding. And we discussed this, Angie, at the committee level, too, about, we t I mean, we talked about three yeah. years and one year. I'm just, I'm not making the motion. I am question, I'm wondering how, how that would even look if we were to consider. Like, how do we even know how much that would be? And the $15,000 grant that you're hopefully getting, um, is that more than one year? That's two years. That's two years. Yeah. And the, Colum or the Columbia County grant that you are running under is forever. We hope. We hope. <laughs> I mean, it's ongoing. Each year. Yes, it okay. is ongoing. So the possibility is strong that it could be the same amount next year. Yes, especially for, uh, for two years. Yeah. And but again, not I sure, always am looking, I'm, I'm always looking for more grants, but yes, yeah. that is where we're sitting right now. I would make a motion to fund LCAT for the 2023-2024 and 2024-2025 school year for up to $70,000 through Fund 80. 70,000 for one year or both, for both years? 75 for each year? Okay. Just building that cushion, but knowing that it's probably not going to be that much. I'd second that. Okay. <clears throat> so, Further discussion of the motion that's on the table. I'm 
work and our discussion was based on one year. And I was very opposed to the idea of funding LCAP based on discussions we've had even before earlier this year. And we talked about this at our committee meeting as well, that I was comfortable with one year and reevaluating and doing things slightly different, kind of to Mr. Riggs's point tonight about how timing one is brought to the school, this, that, and the other. I was comfortable with a year, and we, we again, we, mm -hmm. something you and, we discussed yes, at, and I talked at about the that, committee yes. level, and that's why we decided mm -hmm. to put forth the recommendation of full board for one year, not multiple years. So for multiple years, I, I'm afraid that we're going to, I'm afraid that we're going to take something that we can essentially have unanimous board support and we're going to be divided just based on the fact that it's two years, understanding the reasoning why. I'm okay with one year. I'm okay with the way that the motion read. and was, That was what I was prepared for coming into the meeting tonight. So I'm just stating where I would feel more comfortable are. with one year. And I... I have confidence in that you guys would come back in a year and you're gonna, we're going to see everything laid out better and I just think it's it's going to probably be a much easier decision is I'm, my hope, you know. Um, so that's kind of where I would just, because it's just such a new thing and I know it's not a new thing but it kind of is a new thing, um, I would feel better with one year for sure. And then we just reevaluate in a year and see where everything is. Well, before we vote, um, I, I understand what you're saying, Scott. I understand why the motion was made for two years. <clears throat> I um, would like to have, I feel like we are getting the board support behind LCAP, and I think that is... Um, extremely important that we're listening to each other and that we are, yeah, you know, able to take community input. We are able to talk to each other about this. Um, I am also um, cognizant of the um, concerns about having a year-after-year -year vote on this program and retaining staff, quality staff, to do that. And um, so I'm, I'm really struggling because, Scott, I, I know what, basically what you're, you're making an appeal for board unity on this. Um, and um, I'm referencing back to our discussion at the ad hoc committee. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we, we have discussions at committee meetings. We have discussion, discussions here. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess that's... Yes, I'm gonna say there's an undercurrent of trust between board members, but also a looking at. I'm just saying we've we've had difficulty with this issue. We've had difficulty yeah. coming to the table with this issue. And I guess mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, I, I want to talk about that because it's two things. It's not just LCAT. We are we are coming to the agreement that we want to fund LCAT. Now the question is, do we do it for one or two years? And uh, I guess the thing is, is the whole the whole time that LCAT was brought up from the get go of being funded by the district was one year. That's what was talked about. And all of a sudden we went to this ad hoc meeting and all of a sudden they're suggesting three years. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? So that was, I'm not gonna lie, a little irritating because if all those community members that have been hearing this, if they didn't go to that ad hoc meeting, all of a sudden we're coming here saying three years or two years or whatever. And that's why I feel like, I just feel like this is gonna make majority of people happy it's going to make me feel better as a decision of using taxpayers money wanting to keep LCAT in our community because from what I've heard you guys have a lot of support which sounds like you should you guys do amazing things but I also want the people that don't know about LCAT in this next year I plan on going to more some meetings because I mean I I went to an LCAT meeting way back when and 
now that this is more in my discussion and it's getting talked about, I plan on going definitely to a few. I want to know more. And I'm hoping that's what this community does. And I want everybody in a year to be like, I am really glad that the board did that, and I hope they do it again. And I know not everybody's going to say that, but I just feel like us talking about it, I just feel like it's a little sneaky in a way to keep talking about a year and then all of a sudden say, oh yeah, don't fund it for three years. Okay, what is going on? It's like, you know, the kid that wants to get one cookie and then just keeps trying to grab more even after getting one. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's, I, I think that that was not a nefarious purpose either. I think it is a matter of having personnel whose jobs may be on the line every year. So and why did one year get, for, like, why did that one year come up first and then all of a sudden three years? So when we first had the discussion, um, I brought back to have it multiple years because we did such a deeper dive. And right? you were talking about doing a year and then by putting together, like, the amount of time and energy that the board administration and LCAT have spent on this issue to think that we're going to continue to do that year to year um, there's a lot of also a lot of wasted resources so the feeling was if we've done our due diligence which I think the board has done with having uh, setting up an ad hoc committee then let's look at it are we going to have enough information to make it a multiple year versus going that we're going through this same process every year and so that, that was one of the things that I brought back to the committee. Um, the committee said, no, we want to stay. We had this discussion at the committee level, mm -hmm. and so I shared the recommendation in board docs that came straight out of the committee. Um, but that's why that discussion happened at the, at the ad hoc committee. It wasn't a nefarious reason that, okay, now it was like, we're spending all this time and energy on this topic. If we're doing our due diligence and spending all that time and energy and having these special meetings and going in, mm -hmm. um, and we feel confident that we're making a decision. Let's make a multiple year decision so we're not spending, because that time and energy is being used from other places as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I just, I mean, I can't predict the future, but I can't imagine if we are all in agreement next year, in a year, of funding LCAT that we're going to say let's do one more year again. I have a feeling we will go to a longer, you know, I mean it's just, it's, I, I just think we should start with one year. I understand what you're saying. I think there's something to be said though about the fact that they have committed to this for as long as they have. They have been successful. They have not been negligent with their funding, with their Monday, they're not squandering things. I, I, I think there's some trust that can be shown there. I agree with all We of believe that. with that and giving them a little bit of an extra understanding of security for their jobs. I don't disagree with any of that. I completely agree with that, but it's only been one year that the school's been funding the program. And for these months, my thoughts and prep and discussion have been one year, one year, one year. And I completely understand the reasoning behind the motion, but I'm not going to support that motion for no other reason than the two years. And I want to be able to evaluate each year, and I want to have more time for discussion about multi-year funding not throwing in and have minutes to think about it. I will support LCAP for this year. You will have my vote, but I'm going to vote no for this motion because of it being two years and the reasons that I have alluded to. Okay, so we either need to vote, we will need to vote on this motion unless you made the original motion. Did you want to change your motion or are we going to go, we can go ahead and vote on it? Okay. Should we probably do a roll call on this? Okay. No. My vote's no. No. <laughs> Carrie? Yes. No. Yes. No. So that motion fails. Now we do this one. Well, would you like to make that motion? Sure. I'll move to fund LCAD for the 2023-24 school year through Fund 80. Okay. Another roll call? We had a second. I'll second. Oh. Need a second. Okay. Barb? 
Is that for no. one year? One year. Yeah, what's on his name? Okay. It's just 23, 24, so Okay, okay. Sorry. I did. Okay, thank you. No, that's okay. Aye. Scott? Yes. Chair? No. Heather? Yes. Yes. That motion passes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all that you guys have done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I will not want to see you for another year. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'd love to, to see you all all the yeah. time. It's so great. We need to retrieve Adam and Christy. No. Oh, let's not forget about them. On the agenda, we have approval of the 2022-2023 staff administration compensation. Yeah, so at the March 1st, 2023 committee meeting, the personnel committee reviewed the 23-24 budget forecast, which was given to the district by our third-party financial consultant, R.W. Baird. The discussion included um, a conversation about this year's consumer price index for schools, which is 8.01%. Based on that information, uh, the personnel committee asked the administration to provide information outlining the cost to increase compensation for the different employee groups at 4%, 4.5%, and 5% increases. Uh, the committee members shared that they wanted to show employees how much they valued them and how much it reflected in the compensation, and that, have that reflected in the compensation process. However, they also discussed um, uh, difficulty with budgeting um, with the referendum and long-term fiscal impact and the of compensation to the district. After this compensation, or after this discussion, the personnel committee is recommending full board approval for the following compensation levels: 5.0% uh, compensation increase applied as a percentage on individual salaries for professional exempt staff, a $1 per hour increase for support staff, and a 4.5% uh, compensation increase from percentage on individual salaries for directors, specialist coordinators, and administrative staff. So let me make it clear for people who are watching this because it does get recorded. The Finance Committee had a very long discussion about this, and Personnel Committee had very long discussions about this. And so that's the majority of the board members already who have already had very long discussions about this. So we may not have as long a discussion right now about it because we've already gone through all of that. Mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear. I don't know what we're going to discuss. I think one of the things we talked about um, a lot at the Personnel Committee is the historically what CPI, Computer Consumer Price Index, has been at, and often staff um, uh, increases have been tied to CPI or, or, or related to CPI, close to CPI. And CPI had typically been 1, 1.8, I mean, for a long, long time. We've, we've had, um, you know, around 1, not even 2. Now CPI this year is 8 which is, um, with, uh, is inflation, basically. It's really difficult to predict this kind of um, situation from occurring. So when the referendum was built, it was built on assumptions of not as high in CPI, because that would have been, <laughs> it was a better guess at the time, or a better prediction. So um, the... The referendum wasn't built um, for this kind of CPI increase, so we're not we're not going as high as CPI this year. It's at five percent. It's not at eight percent. Um, as a as a as a balance between the fiscal responsibility of needing this to be sustainable over the years, um, but also acknowledging that people's ex teachers and staffs' uh, living expenses are higher, just like everybody else's. So. It is, it is not perfect, but it is, um, you know, again, at the committee level, we've really discussed this um, a lot and have tried to. And I'm actually not in either of those committees, and I don't know if this, I just kind of thought of it now, otherwise I would have brought it up so people could possibly look it up. Do we know, not that we would do what everyone else is doing, but I'm just curious, do we know what other districts are doing that are? So we've had conversations with uh, colleagues across um, the state and many are looking at between 4 and 5%. There are some districts who are looking at CPI okay. um, because that is what um, 
you know, districts usually look at is CPI. So we've been, you know, as Angie said, you know, CPI is between like 1.8, 2.2, you know, we've been right around that percentage. So, um, but yeah, we've we've had discussion with colleagues, and again, most of them are looking between this four and five percent range. Most of them aren't feeling their budgets are able to. And, and the other piece of it that's that's really difficult is we don't know what the state's going to give us. Um, so state budget is they're in process of having those discussions right now. Um, I was in a listening session today with Senator Joan Bowie and shared our inform you know, information about that. There's a letter later that we're coming on talking about advocating for uh, more funding from the state. Uh, there's a joint um, finance committee uh, meeting on Wednesday that I plan on going to and testifying and asking that they support schools because um, the last budget two years ago um, they gave us a zero they gave us a slight increase in special ed reimbursement which was the first increase in, in a long long time but then they gave us no increase on the revenue limit and no per pupil increase um, although they shared that they gave us an increase um, but it, they didn't raise the revenue limit so it went straight through us to the taxpayer um, so that's another part that makes it very hesitant to go any higher than this because you just don't know if the state's going what the state's going to do. Um, uh, you, you know, uh, when Beard came and talked to us, um, they showed like two years ago. This is what the governor's proposals were, and then this is what happened. They xed them all. Every single one of them was gone. So, uh, but one, and that was the one that. Yep, they, they increased some funding, but you know what? It went through to the taxpayer, which again, I'm not opposed to taxpayer relief, but then call it taxpayer relief, don't call it state aid, school aid. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another com competing factor that, that the committees have had to think about. Like um, the other piece of it, was the conversation we had was do we wait? Right? We could wait and see what the state budget does. Well, the state's supposed to be done by July. Sometimes it's done by July, sometimes it's not done until October. Um, secondly, if other schools are settling, right, we're trying to keep our staff. So we want to be able to issue contracts in, in May, get them out, let them know what they're going to be paid for next year, and not have staff go, I don't know what I'm going to be paid. And some neighboring districts, well, well, if you come here, we'll let you know if we're going to get paid, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we just, again, want to make sure that we are compensating our staff. And I think that's the conversation that we had a lot was we want to make sure we're compensating our staff fairly. Um, our strategic plan talks about retaining and attracting staff, um, and but we also need to be fiscally responsible mm -hmm. long term. So that was a lot of the discussion. Thank you. So that was a that. very winding mm -hmm. answer no, to your I question. No, but I appreciate it. I'm yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that has no, and, questions. And, so. and you're right. So part of it is we've had these discussions, and so it's a good question because you forget who you had these discussions yeah. with and who you haven't, and you know people who are watching haven't. Yeah, been a part of all those discussions. And I think it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when we were in the committee, we were talking about those schools that are coming up to that 8% had mm -hmm. just passed the referendum this year for that. So some of them. Of, some of them, not all of them. Yeah. So that's kind of an unfair comparison to us, like, oh, well, this neighboring community, right, but they have a brand new referendum that they passed for that amount. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that's, that's good to know, too. Yeah, and so we were kind of in that boat last year where we were able to use referendum funds to, like, go over the four person. We went over CPI last year um, because we, one of the things we went to the referendum was that we were going to catch staff up yeah. to our neighboring districts, right? So the board, um, the administration recommended a 4.7. The board said, no, we're going to go 5.4 for um, uh, our, our um, teaching staff, uh, professional staff. They went a $1 uh, raise for everybody else, 4.7 for directors, and I think administration was 2.5% last year. Uh, so, um, but right, we did not build the referendum based on this. Um, that's the problem. I think that's the hard part with the referendum, right? It's projections. It's the best estimate at the time using third-party people who do this, like Baird Financial, who does this for lots of different school districts. And that's what we're doing looking for uh, out ahead of us as well. We're forecasting and what this does to our forecast moving forward. Um, I will make a motion uh, to move the, the school district of Lodi to provide the following 2023-24 staff increases. 5% for professional exempt staff applied as a percentage on an individual salary 
$1 per hour increase for support staff and a 4.5% increase for director specialist coordinators and administrative staff as applied as a, applied as a percentage of individual salary. And I'll second that. Motion by Angie and second by Terry. Further discussion? So what you just read I think is clear to most of us, but I don't think it's clear to the people watching. Right? What is the 5% for professional exempt? So this is on individual salary so to everyday question. people. So a 5%, um, you can do 5% salary increase in two different ways. Uh, a professional exempt staff, and the reason it's, it's that's teaching staff, but it's also our speech language, our counselors, our school nurses, those type of people. That's why it's professional <coughs> um, So you could do it two ways. You could take everybody, this is how much everybody makes in that group. What's well, a 5% increase, and then divide it evenly amongst everybody. So everybody, everybody gets, gets a flat the same amount. Raise. Right. That's one way to That's do it. That's one way to do it. What this motion is saying, what the committee decided they'd want to do is like you take individual salaries, 5% of that, that's the raise. The amount at the end is the same amount, right? Overall, how much you're paying for the increase across is the, the bottom line number is the exact same amount if you do 5% this way or that way, but it impacts people in a different way. So the committee decided to say, Based on your salary, if you're making fifty thousand dollars, we're gonna do five percent on that fifty thousand, and this is your new salary. Versus, if you're making fifty thousand dollars, everybody's getting a twenty-five hundred dollar raise. This is what you're getting. Does that make sense? Hopefully. I think that's clear. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. One abstention, so it passes six to zero with one abstention. We also have another piece of this compensation that is in here as well. Uh, the personnel committee also <laughs> approved increasing the minimum wage for our hourly summer help. Um, so moving our seasonal summer seasonal employees from twelve fifty an hour to fifteen dollars an hour, which is our base for everything else. Moving our summer IT employees from fourteen to fifteen dollars an hour, and continuing IT employees from fifteen to sixteen. Again, this is just summer help. And then weekend monitors, people monitor our buildings, moving them from $13 to $15. <coughs> so that was uh, unanimously recommended to the board from the personnel committee. I move to recommend full board approval of following wage increases. Summer seasonal employees from $12.50 per hour to $15 per hour. Summer IT employees from $14 an hour to $15 an hour. And continuing IT summer workers from $15 an hour to $16 an hour. Weekend monitor wage from $13 an hour to $15 an hour. I'll second that. <coughs> so second by Terry. Any further discussion on that one? That's pretty clear. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? This passes 6 to 0 with one abstention. <coughs> we lost where we are. Uh, next is consideration of contracts and letters of assurance. So every year this time, we just got done talking about uh, we want to make sure we get our contracts out. So uh, the board needs to approve, uh, uh, take action for us to approve professional exempt staff, staff contracts going out. And we also issue uh, letters of assurance to our support staff that they have a position for next year. So we always do this at this meeting. Um, with, with, with that with compensation, that way in May we can send out contracts to our staff and letters of assurance to our support staff. Make a motion to approve issuing 2023-2024 contracts to district professional slash exempt staff and to approve issuing 2023-2024 school year letters of assurance to all district support staff employees. And second. Motion by Angie and a second by Scott. Further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It passes 7 to 0. Staff handbook revision. Yeah, so during the 2021-22 school year and this past school year, the Board of Education has held uh, listening sessions at each, uh, with staff at each of the school buildings, so on two different occasions. On January 4th, uh, the Personnel Committee asked the administration to bring back themes that emerged from these meetings to the committee for discussion. The committee reviewed the themes that emerged over the meetings the past three months. Um, and the committee is looking, again, as we talked about earlier, the committee is also looking for ways that we can make school district a great place to work for staff 
but don't always, it's not always just compensation, right? We're trying to do other, we just know we're limited at times with compensation, what are the other things we can do? So based on the input from staff, the personnel committee is recommending the following changes to the staff handbook uh, for the following school year. That they would increase their payout from paid time off from $1, $1, <laughs> Uh, $100 to $150 per day and allow staff to carry over two PTO days per year for a maximum of five days in any given year with a maximum payout of three unused PTO days per year starting with a 23-24 school year. And so we're looking, I'm going to talk about these each individually. So the reason we looked at moving that from 100 to 150, that rate hasn't changed in a very, very long time. And when that rate was put in place, we were paying subs $90 a day. So it was beneficial for the district that we pay a little bit more to have our own staff stay. We are now paying subs $140 a day to come. And we're only paying our staff $100 um, if they don't. Yeah. So it, it doesn't make fiscal sense, right? So it made sense for us to bump that up. Staff are also been asking if we could carry over days. Um, it's not giving them any more days over the course of two years and it wouldn't cost the district anything more in paying out over the course of two years, but they could carry over and at times would be able to take, maybe I want to take four days off um, one year and not take day, days off the year before. So that was the reason for that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we do them individually? You yeah. sure could, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I will move to increase payout of paid time off days from $100 to $150 per day and allow staff to carry over two PTO days per year for a maximum of five days in any given year with a maximum payout of three unused PTO days per year starting with the 2023-2024 school year. I'll second. Motion by myself and a second by Angie. Any further discussion on that one? Well, just to your point that you said previously, Adam, <laughs> this isn't stuff that we're just doing willy-nilly here tonight. Hours at the committee level have been spent discussing these points that Vince is reading tonight. So, like you mentioned earlier, people are aware. I think it just bears saying again that there's a lot of time and discussion that went into what we're doing here right now. And I, and I will say this too, like we did hear, these are some of the common themes we heard at the listening sessions. We heard a lot of things at the listening sessions that we were not able to put into items for our committee. So just so it's not that we're saying, okay, we're done with those listening sessions, we're, you know, we're, we're all good. These are just action items that we had discussed and thought that these were some things that we could move forward. So we'll continue to do other things as well. Keep listening. Any, anything else on that one? <clears throat> all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That passes six to zero with one abstention. Next. Yeah, uh, the second one was to increase our credit reimbursement for certified staff to $200 per undergraduate credit, $225 per graduate credit. This has been 100 for undergraduate credit and 125 for graduate credit, credit, can't say that word, credit since 2004. So it hasn't changed in almost 20 years. Um, you know, as anybody who's gone to college knows the cost for credit has gone up significantly over the last how many years. But the total reimbursement, uh, a maximum of 12 credits from September 1 through August 31st, which is our language in our handbook. Um, and it's not enough to cover all the, no, <laughs> the cost no. of credit. <laughs> no. But anyways, we, we know that. But yep. again, it's tempting to be fiscally responsible, but also to support that. And we, we do want to look more at um, ways to encourage staff to continue their education and this is again just an action item that we were able to put on it's not the end of the story I'll make a motion to increase the credit reimbursement for certification staff to $200 per undergraduate credit 225 per graduate credit and with the total reimbursement a maximum of 12 credits from September 1st through August 31st I'll second starting with starting with Terry starting with 2023, 2024 school year. Okay, so that's not on there, sorry. 2022, 2023. 2020. So, most invited. Terry, who seconded? Christy, in the second by Christy. Any further discussion on that one? Yeah. I was still reading from a book. All in favor say aye. 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 Let's pass the 6 to 0 with one at staying. Next. Uh, the third one is to allow staff to utilize a once-in-a-lifetime event leave once every five years to extend the holiday break. 
currently, uh, staff, if they want to use their PTO uh, to extend a holiday break, like Christmas break, spring break, Memorial Day, Labor Day weekend, um, Thanksgiving, uh, they can, uh, if they have once-in-a-lifetime event, can apply to the district, and if they, we look in their file, if they've never used it, um, they're allowed to use a PTO day. Well, as we all know, uh, staff have more than once in a once-lifetime event. You can have a funeral or a, a wedding. You can have multiple weddings and you know children, or um, you have other you know things that come up uh, uh, around your life. The reason it's in there, though, is those days are very difficult for us to get subs. Right? Lots of people like to extend the holiday, their holiday, including our subs. Right? Our subs at times like to like. The day before Christmas break, leave so we don't have subset. <coughs> so, um, this kind of balances those things that once in a lifetime doesn't mean once in your whole life. That's all you get to use this leave for. Um, but it allows staff that every five years we can look at back and say, have you used it? Have you not used it? Yep, we'll allow you to use it again. I move to allow staff to utilize the once in a lifetime event leave once every five years to extend a holiday break starting with the 2023-24 school year. I'll second that. Motion by Scott and the second by Terry. Any further discussion on that one? All in favor say aye. Aye. Ooh, that one passes 7-0. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. Uh, the last one is to allow our administrative assistants, educational assistants, and other non-exempt staff Members to use a maximum of three days of PTO to be paid out for a day when school is closed due to inclement weather or emergency. Um, that, that's a defined in the school district load I handbook on page 69 that causes schools to be closed. Um, again, so when we call off school, um, our support staff can put, if they have paid time off, can use that day to be paid for that day. Um, we have now, based on the last few years, um, this year, um, we have made our calendar where we can absorb three snow days. So this allows staff, if we end up having three of those snow days, they use their PTO, but they still get paid. If they don't have uh, PTO, then they don't get paid, but this allows them uh, to do that. I move to allow an administrative assistant, educational assistant, or other non-exempt staff member to use a maximum of three days of PTO to be paid for a day when school is closed due to inclement, inclement weather or emergency that the school district of Lodi employee handbook page 69 causes school to be closed starting in the 2023-24 school year. I'll second. Motion by Angie and second by each other. Any further discussion on that one? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That one also passes 7-0. Thank you for doing that hard work because that was not easy to go through those at the committee level. Uh, next, that's me, state budget advisory letter. Yeah, so uh, the state of Wisconsin, as we've talked about, is currently in the middle of 23 25 budget development. Uh, the joint finance committee is currently holding listening sessions across the state. Area school districts have worked to, get to put together an attached letter advocating uh, for additional funding for public education. Administration would ask the board to approve the administration and board signing this letter so it would come from the administration and the Board of Education in the school district of Lodi, and we would send it on with other area school districts that are doing the same, having this conversation with their boards as well. I move to approve the administration and board signing of the <coughs> budget advocacy letter. Second. Motion by Angie and a second by Barr. Further discussion. So as Vince, uh. Vince mentioned, man, tongue twisters tonight. We met with Joan Baldwin today, and we talked about this very thing, right? We need to have adequate funding over time. I brought up the fact of, could we get our funding tied to the CPI? So when we're giving teachers CPI, can we get funding that matches that CPI? So we have that to cover, and we don't need to go to referendum anymore. And, and this is another way to meet more lawmakers. Um, Vince and I are going on Wednesday to the Dells to go public input in on their budgets to see if we can get joint finance to cover some of this stuff. And that's what, that money is sitting there. Hopefully we can get some of that to come back to the schools. Which is what this letter is trying to do. Who actually wrote the letter? Uh, I came out of a group at Dane County, some Dane County superintendents. Dane County superintendents yeah. got together. I'm part, of a, I'm part of a Dane County superintendents group. They meet every other Friday. 
but there's other like area like I've seen a letter out of southwest or southeastern Wisconsin two groups of defendants <coughs> doing that. Um, so yeah, I've had unusual. this letter on to other boards in the area yep. to make sure they saw it too. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's a seven to zero. Parent student handbook. Yeah, it's hard. Well, it's not as hard to believe. It was so nice out today, no. right? Uh, but it's that time of year we start uh, finishing up one school year in the midst of planning for a new one. Handbooks are being presented for approval are the one, the first step in that process. Uh, we're doing them a month earlier so we can move up our registration a little bit. Um, and so the summaries are providing outlined proposed changes um, to the submitted handbooks, and we'd recommend uh, approving all the handbooks. So the question: Are these handed out as? Do you you don't hand paper handbooks anymore? No more. So they are live on the website. So if a change has to be made, it does need to come to the board, but it can be immediately. Yes. Right? Yes. So the only changes we will make without coming back to the board is we will update board members and their positions okay. once that happens after the um, next board meeting when we do a reorganization meeting. So those things will be updated. Um, but yes, it would have to come back. So if there was a need them. to like immediately do it before the next yeah. year. But it, it <coughs> needs to be in for when you do registration, you have to, they have to be a linked in there so people can read them and click that, that they've read them. Read it, yeah, yeah. That they have access okay. to it. And then they're also up on uh, every district, every building's website has their student book on. Um, I just, I have a question for the high school. There was no um, sports or co-curricular code of conduct on there. Was That's it? coming in, that'll be in May. Okay. okay. So we're we're, we're, we're going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's coming. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> and then did you get a rid, so is the advisory schedule not happening next year? Or the advisory I? schedule is not going to be the same schedule that we have that sh this year where it was at the beginning of the day. We're moving it to the end of the day, which we've made that change uh, after spring break. It's the okay, same thing. We still, we still go through an SEL lesson um, and go through advisory. But we've shifted it to the end. And a couple reasons why is because of a lot of staff feedback, but also because of sports ramping up in the spring and there are kids that are leaving early on Monday and we didn't want it to affect our regular classes. So we move it to the end of the day. So they, it would, they would just be missing homeroom or advisory at the end of the day. So. Nobody made a motion yet, right? No. <laughs> I move to approve the 2023-2024 revisions and changes to the parent student handbook for the Lodi Primary School, Lodi Elementary School, OSC, Lodi Middle School, and Lodi High School. Now I'll second that. Motion by Angie and a second by Terry for their discussion. So all of us, when we get an app or a program on our computer and we get that, do you agree? And we click because you can't get the app or whatever to work, but never read it. I'm just worried that we're in that boat now with these. I remember when these were paper and we'd get them and they'd look and you, they were physical. You had to sign them. And I'm not saying go back. I'm just saying. Oh, you mean you're talking about when the parents. People missing this now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you people are missing this yeah. now. But if it's paper, you don't have to read it either. No. <laughs> no. I was going to say, I remember the paper days yeah. and that wasn't always read either. No. Either you read it or you don't read it. <laughs> Is there common on life, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes mm -hmm. 7 to 0. Primary school staff handbook. Uh, similar to parents' student handbook, the, it's time to revise these as well. So, submitted faculty handbook, first step for planning for next year. So, I'd recommend approval of the primary school faculty handbook, and you'll see the other ones sure next month. I'll move to approve the recommended 2023-2024 revisions and changes to the faculty handbook for the Lodi Primary School. I'll second. Motion by Terry and a second by <coughs> Christy. Does anybody have anything else to add to that? All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's a 7 0. Audio systems. Audio systems. Another fun discussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> facility finance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. School District of Lodi's administrative team uh, requests to review our current audio systems located in the gymnasiums, common areas, and athletic facilities. 
Um, the reason being we had uh, several complaints um, and uh, from some of our uh, sound systems. Uh, oh. Me being one of the people complains, but um, yeah. so <laughs> right. So we, but instead of just looking at one or two, we said, well, let's take a broad view and take a really big look at what we have. And so uh, Tyler took the lead on that, and as Tyler does, he did tug really into it, and, um, put together, met with the, a couple of companies, um, and got bids on looking at uh, the different systems. Um, and then after I got the bids, went through and, and had deep, actually got the bids from three people, three companies uh, <coughs> decided that one wasn't worth pursuing, so dug in a little deeper with these two, um, and then had deep conversation with them again, like, why are you choosing this? Why are you choosing that? And came back and he met with the Facility and Finance Committee, and, you know, as you look at that, it's really difficult to think that we financially could do all those things right now. Um, so we talked about what are the number one and number two areas that we would recommend. And there was a little disagreement at the committee level, which one would be number one, which would be two, it would be one A or one, one B, whatever. Uh, but there's two that really kind of stood out, which is the high school gymnasium and the stadium. Right? Those two really stand out that they, they need work. Um, so the committee recommended us moving forward with um, completing those two items and purchasing a portal system uh, all through MasterCon, and that the district would use fund balance. Um, fund that, those purchases and those. Do we have a portable one right now? Nothing. 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 OSC has a portable. Nothing viable, as Tyler would say. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like that would be good to have. Yeah. <clears throat> and the cost was north of $200,000 to do all the projects that were looked at. So that was part of the reason that the committee kind of picked what we thought was most dire, most in need of, and that, to your point, Vince, one and two, we may have interchanged the order, but one and two were very obvious to Everybody. members of the committee. So when, when we talk about using fund balance, these are fund balances, we know that we're going to have to buy certain things, they're not necessarily in the, you know, different like referendum, referendum budgets or whatever, it's just like we know certain things are going to come up. We have the fund balance to cover those or judiciously apply that fund balance. Uh, so that's where this is and coming from. And it's fund, this. not fun. Huh? It's fund, not fun. Did I say fun? <laughs> no, no, it always sounds like that, though. It's, oh. it's not fun balance. It's yeah. fun balance. It's so, it's so fun. fun. No, it was fun talking about it. Fun when there's a new system so, in right. the gym. And you can the, yeah, that's, that'll be great, Jim. Um, so the other items will kind of stay on a keep eye, yeah. keep our yeah. keep, keep our eye on for extra money yeah. list. In case there's extra money. Yeah, it's good just to have a no a knowledge, like what would it take, right? Uh -huh. And um, to walk through and have that conversation. Well, it might we'll go keep up every year to fix it. So <laughs> yeah, let's maybe. fix this one now. I have a few more questions, but I'll make a motion to approve replacing the sound system in the high school gymnasium and high school stadium and purchase a portable system through MasterCom not to exceed $90,000. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Motion by Christy and a second by Heather. Further so, discussion? So for the portable system, what what is our vision for that? Is it going to travel through the district? Yeah, I, my idea was that it would be housed in the IT department, and then when it was requested, we would make sure everything was there and functional, take it to the site. For example, the small gymnasium over here at LES or um, track uh, event so that they could have an uh, actual audio system there. Um, in outdoor instructional areas like behind the middle school. So wherever an audio system would be needed, it could be taken to that location. What do you see as the longevity on something like that that will travel through? <laughs> <laughs> the product that we chose uh, will be packaged in a, a very heavy case, so travel will not damage it. Um, we're looking 15, 20 years. Okay, oh, nice. Is the whole. better than I thought. And then my last question is, so if we're going to update the high school gym, would we then, would this portable system be good enough for our little ones, or would we then consider like the Veterans Day you know, presentation that they all did and nobody could hear them and understand what they were saying. They worked so hard at it. Would we take our littles and put them to the high school and 
and utilize this resource that way until we can get it, or are we thinking that this is just for the high schoolers? The portable system? Or no, the, oh, like the, because we're going to revamp the high school gym. Gotcha. Would we as a district consider transporting we, our littles instead? We could, we could definitely consider it. So, I mean, I think in the, in the primary school, right, they have a pretty new audio system. Um, the hard part is in this building, yeah. right? And now they're the part of this building, like I was in there the other day for a, um, Eric did a phenomenal welcome back um, assembly with kids um, last uh, last Monday, which was awesome, and it worked great for that. But it wasn't as full, and because when you have it full like that, the HVAC system has to kick in, so which makes it more difficult. So yeah. it's something we need to think about if we have a Veterans Day program at the elementary school, do we move it up to the high school? But then we probably wouldn't use the gym; we'd probably use our the PAC because we sure. that's where we when the, at the high school and they have the Veterans Day program, they do it in the PAC. Sure. Right, so. Okay, so maybe we just consider that so we can mm -hmm. get yep. it revamped, which I yep. hope we still keep on the docket. <laughs> Stays on the, it's a great start. That's all my questions. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Do you want to pose? This is 7 to 0. The spring School Board election update. Yeah, uh, so again, I mentioned this before, the board elected two new school board members this past Tuesday. Uh, I can thank Barb for her service. Um, I look forward to working with our two new board members, Sarah and Adam. I believe both of them have their heart in the right place and want to do what's in the best interest for our district and our family, our staff, and our community. Um, I look forward to Sarah bringing fresh ideas and perspectives to the board. Uh, the board will have their reorganizational meeting on April 24th at 5.30 p.m at which time Sarah and Adam will begin their terms. Um, I also want to thank Susan Gatel and Julie McKernan for their willingness to serve the community in the district. As Adam mentioned before, it's very difficult to put your name on a ballot, and, and being willing to serve, as you guys all know, serving on the board is a very difficult thing. So uh, I really appreciate them willing to do that. So how do you guys feel about 5.30 versus 6? Because my plane lands at 4.30 on that day. And I don't think it'll be a problem, but... Into Madison? Into Madison. Mm. I don't care about six. Okay, we can, uh, does it work for people to have it at six o'clock? A little more wiggle room. Is that all right? It shouldn't be a long meeting. Okay. It's usually not a very long meeting. Oh, that works better for me. Okay. Six? Yeah. Okay. No, no later because I'm out of the country and I'm six hours. Is the. Oh. It'll be okay. I'll wake up. It's only midnight. Come on. Midnight. Oh, is, is oh, the organization meeting open time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they all are. Yeah, all are. There's not. Well, we've there's got a closed session. Portion we do. We don't. Yeah. This is. No, we. Cool. Other, yeah, unless something comes up between now, we could still have a closed session. We could still, but that part of the meeting is open. Um, it's not that we something could come up. We could approve other things. Typically, we don't. But it is an open board meeting. There's not like public input or things of that nature. We don't have any of that. But it's a it's an open board meeting, absolutely. Okay, so we're changing it to six officially. Won't won't hurt us. Okay. Seems to be a consensus. Okay. Well, then your flight's going to be delayed like seven hours, and, yeah, then, and then we'll be like, <laughs> and we got a whole other problem. <laughs> um, before yeah. we move on, yeah. with you being in Italy and you potentially having flight issues, does it have to be the 24th? I mean, I understand there is a dead there's before. a need to get it started yeah. or going. We'd have, we'd have to do it before then. 24th is the latest we can do it. When do you leave for latest? Italy? I leave on Sunday, the 16th. So the Friday before? So that would be this Friday would be the latest. I, mean, I don't mind. Well, that's this Friday. Yeah, I don't. I was just I wondering if next it. Monday would be. Mm. Next Monday is the award. We feel the impact awards. We feel the impact awards. So when do you get back, Angie? I get back on May first. She's gonna do it virtual. Yeah, I'm gonna do it virtual. Oh, yeah. That's that's so very confusing. Don't worry, like you know, we taught pandemics taught us you can be anywhere in the world and yeah. be on the big screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's more just knowing airfare travel. Not, I don't know which airport you're coming out of, but yeah, it's yeah. Adam's probably going to be the one that's <laughs> stuck, with stuck in the air. Next, we have policy first readings, and there's a yeah. So the policy committee met on March 22nd to continue their work for the transition to Neola policy services. The committee reviewed and unanimously moved to the full board the recommendation approval of 56 Neola policies that are listed on the board. 
Docs at their March meeting. And they also made one revision to the Exhibit 830. Uh, the remainder of the or as a reminder of the plan for the transition from Neola, we can we will give the policies a first read, then we set them aside, and we'll give them a second read when we, the entire policy handbook is done. That way, the district's not working under two different policies. So don't wait to do your homework. <laughs> yeah, so it gets worse. Thank you to the policy committee for all of their work. That could be a committee you're on next year. Uh, and then we have second policy readings. Sorry. Yeah, so readings. there is a second read for revisions to, and these are our current policies, uh, policy 153, school board evaluation questionnaire, and policy 161, um, member role and responsibilities. Um, so they came out of committee with a recommendation, um, went through first read, and now um, something we're, we're at the point to approve them. Does anybody want to talk about that? Oh. I will move to approve the revisions to policy 153, school board evaluation questionnaire, and policy 161, board member roles and responsibilities as presented. And I'll second that. Motion by myself and second by Terry. Any further discussion? Okay. No. So, this is the one that um, I had actually voted no on of removing that word non pecuniary. Um, and the reason why was because. Um, in my mind, I don't want somebody to sit in these seats that has some kind of a gain or interest in to vote in that direction. But, um, Adam, you had mentioned before there is a, another policy that talks about... Can you touch up, please? <laughs> we have another policy that states when there's ambiguity for a board member in a situation, that board member needs to back away from those situations they are agreeing through that policy and the oath they take that when they're in those positions and they're like hey this is a questionable thing you're doing back away from it and recuse yourself and get out of it. So how is that different from this? So the, the pecuniary versus non-pecuniary not being defined in our policy means anyone can come to us and say I'm accusing you of pecuniary or non-pecuniary. And somebody can't come and say I'm accusing you of being Ambiguous. <laughs> like. Because they're not defined, anything goes, right? And so anyone doing that accusation has a legal standing because we can't defend it because it's not defined. You can't defend something that's not defined. So we either have to put in all the definitions of what those are. And since it's so gray, how do we do that? That's the question. Right. And so removing it because it's not required by state statute or anything like that makes it easier. The other thing that we discussed at committee was having that wording in there causes board members to have to back away from everything we're doing in the schools. Because now anything we do in the schools, someone can come to us and say, that's not pecuniary. And I'm challenging you on that. You cannot vote on that. You cannot be a part of that discussion. And in a town like Lodi or an area like Lodi or a school district like ours, we kind of want board members to be involved in our schools and the things that are happening. And so removing them does not make sense to me anyway and didn't to the committee at the time. Right? Can we just give an example for people listening? Okay, so like we're talking about, the, the policy says members are expected to avoid conflicts of pecuniary interest, which means financial interest. So if I'm going to financially gain from something, I should not be part of that discussion whether the board's going to approve it. And, and to make it clear, that's staying in. That is staying in. That is, not that is more straightforward. Well, the, t the discussion is removing the term non-pecuniary interests, which is a vague term, which means it's not financial, but you're going to get some gain. Let's say one of us was um, volunteering to help with one of the sports teams, like we were volunteer coaching or something like that. And then anything about the, that team would come before the board. Well, theoretically, someone could make the argument, you shouldn't be voting on that because you're or helping out. It. Or discussing it because you're helping. Well, and then you say, well, I'm just helping. <laughs> Let's just say that like when you, when you open, when you use such a vague term, it can make a lot of messiness as to who can have a discussion. That's what we're talking about. We're leaving, we're not saying we're going to remove the, the, the CUNY, the 
money. Avoid <laughs> conflicts of pecuniary, which is money interest. That is staying in. We're just saying this vague, non-pecuniary, that is, it's impossible to define because so it, uh, the benefit you gain by helping with coach a team or helping something that, that's vague and indefinable. So, but so somebody that... If nobody cares and nobody comes forward, no issue. But the, the chance, and someone has come forward, right? The chance of that happening is there. And now that people are doing that, we have to respond to that. I mean, I teach science club in high school. That's a could be defined this way. And so I would have to back away from that. Because I would not be able to make decisions about the high school. Well, I'd worry more about we have young board members, which we love to have younger board members, and we have grandkids in school too. So it would be if your kids are you know, in a certain sport and all of a sudden we're cutting funding on that sport or we're voting for a new field on the sport that your kid's been in. You know, I mean, somebody could actually be that picky if they wanted to be that picky. It could be literally anything. That's the problem. It's not fine. Anything else? Any other questions, comments? I guess I'm just I'm just concerned that we're le we're opening a door to allow people to make a way so that people can skew things. But I guess if we have that other policy, then that kind of protects us as well. Right, because the other policy says you know what you're doing, or you see what's happening, or someone legal has told you, right, mm -hmm. that this is an issue. You better back away, and if you don't back away, then right, any board member could say, hey, I don't think this looks right to another board member, right? And legal could jump in and say, no, that they're right. It doesn't look right. You need to back away. So that would cl close that door you're saying that we're thinking we're opening. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So we would still would be able to close that door. There's no... It's not black and white. That's the problem, right? Everything's that is the problem. Right. <laughs> is the you can't problem. think of every situation. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if there wasn't everything wasn't gray. Right? right. You wouldn't need us. <laughs> we wouldn't need anybody. Black and white. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I'm good. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Well, it's past seven to zero. Gifts and donations. Lots of them today. Yeah. yeah. The administration recommends the board accept <laughs> the great gratitude the donation from Ideal Building of. A Grizzly Shaper router worth approximately $1,925, the Tech Ed Department at the high school, and a $5,000 donation from the Robert Quam uh, Memorial to Lodi High School. I make a motion. We move to accept with great gratitude the donation from Ideal Building of a Grizzly Shaper router <laughs> worth approximately uh, $1,925 to the Tech Ed Department. And can I make both of them at once or one at a time? Also make a motion to move to accept with great gratitude the five thousand dollar donation from the Robert Quam Memorial for the Lodi High School. A second. Motion by Terry and a second by Scott. Further discussion. I would like to say that the first one came out of Tyler, do you know that? The first one came out of inviting businesses in. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> it's like no. we've started doing that and well, other okay. things come out of that. So it's amazing. All in favor say aye. 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 Next, we have committee reports. First up, we have season five. Right? I actually was homesick last uh, week, so I couldn't go. Oh, which bummed me out. You yeah. so like that. Yeah. What? You like going to that? I do. <laughs> really? I had to email Michelle and say, I probably shouldn't go, but I want to. And she's like, and I was like, it's before Easter. I probably shouldn't go and expose everybody. So I had to stay home. Your passion for that does come through, though. So just a reminder, whoever's uh, it, that become, is you or CISA will have a meeting shortly after our reconciliation meeting. They'll have their annual quick. meeting, so it's pretty quick. So whoever we point needs to go I think to that. It's May 10th. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. So. Yep. Uh, Co-curricular items. April 2023 co-curricular report. Baseball. Lodi baseball team has been hit hard by climate and wet spring weather, with their first three games being postponed due to wet weather or field conditions. 
They opened the season this past weekend, traveling to Marshall, where they lost a close game by a final score of 5-4. to four. They have a busy week ahead, hosting Adams Friendship tonight, Belleville on Thursday, and traveling to Sauk Prairie on Saturday. Lodi softball team is also being hit hard uh, by poor weather and uh, wet spring weather, with their first two games being postponed due to weather. They open the season tonight at home against Marshall. They will travel to Lake Mills on Tuesday before hosting Columbus and Edgerton on Thursday and Friday. You will see a number of new faces on the softball team with several freshmen making the varsity roster. The Lodi girls soccer team is currently one and one. Over spring break, the soccer team traveled to Marion Catholic in Chicago Heights, Illinois, falling two to four to the Monarchs. This past Thursday, they hosted Watoma Wild Rose for their home opener, coming away with a strong 14-0 victory. They have a busy week ahead hosting Columbus on Tuesday for teacher appreciation night and traveling to Monroe on Thursday and Baraboo on Friday. The track and field team is off to a strong start. This past weekend, they participated in the Wisconsin State Indoor Track Meet at UW-Whitewater. Notable finishes include Paul Lins, 800 meters, fourth place. Uh, Noah Hudak, Paul Lins, Gavin Sargent, Zach Nyquist, 4 by 400 meter, sixth place. Willie Strong, 60 meter, eighth place. Lodi Varsity Golf Team has not yet competed due to the recent wet weather. The next scheduled varsity event is on Thursday, April 13th, for the conference mini meet at the Columbus Country Club. In March, the Lodi High School forensics team participated in the district competition at DeForest High School. Nine Lodi High School students advanced to the state forensics tournament, which will take place later in April. Thank you. OSC. So, OSC, Project Night was a success. Over 400 people attended. They had 30 applications for next year, so there was no lottery this year. Um, and next up is the music hall. Is that May 5th? I don't have the date in front of me. Here we go. The music hall. Sorry. Sorry, Eric, put right. you on the heat It's May 5th. I'm looking for the yeah. yep. May 5th. Yeah. Okay. So not only the music hall, but also the... Yeah, it's the big, that's our biggest fundraiser. So Great. it's a musical show with a... Bucket raffle and silent auction, not silent auction, silent raffle, whatever you call it, yeah. kind of thing. Um, but when you do your reorganization meeting, the next OSC meeting is Wednesday, April 26th at 6.30 at OSC. So. Okay. What's the know? We talked about literally, everything we talked about is literally on the agenda and already been discussed. Curriculum. At length. <laughs> Well, we had Mr. McKellar, who is the um, language, um, world languages teacher at the high school, and he filled us in about the CAP program and how um, the dual credit, dual credit class supports students. Um, COVID really put a, a kind of a, a clink in their chain, and also this year they weren't able to run the program because they didn't have quite enough numbers, but that shouldn't be a problem in the future. The neat thing he was talking about is that our native um, Spanish speakers could also um, take advantage of that CAP program because they're already partway there. I mean, they could really. And so what happens is they're just ahead for college and to kind of let kids know that that's really much more of a option. So, and Paula Tan was here and she also was talking about um, digital citizenship is a curriculum and again she doesn't go out and teach it in each building but she um, helps other teachers present pieces of it and it's just how to be safe on the internet how to be appropriate on the internet how to um, just behave which isn't a class that we had <laughs> we didn't have such a thing and, be doing it for adults as well. well no I mean I think there are going to be some chances for adults to have some information as far as like their kids and even for themselves how not to embarrass your child on Facebook I don't know but anyway so it was it was really I mean it was like a surprise to me it was like let's have this this is so good but it's a surprise to me that now we have it because here we are so and she also on um, the part about the um, the light the monies that come from the federal government that 
you know, all librarians get and the process that she goes through and all the people she's connected to um, in the other libraries and the other school districts. And it was just fun to listen to. There was so much. And let's see, we had a middle school math update. And also Nick was talking about the tier three for math. And what happens is we have a lot of literacy programs that are really helping to catch up our kids in literacy. And we don't have all of those programs in math. It's more individual with students. So he's sort of piloting um, kind of a in-house program. You could correct me if I'm wrong here. So at, at OC, we're, um, so one of the things we, rec we recognize in leveraging some of our extra three dollars is really needing to invest in both um, on the reading and math side we call it tier three interventions so students who um, maybe are not having the level of success within core instruction that we would like to see and so it's an uh, extra support and so the resources resources to go with that of which we have invested historically pretty well I would say on the reading side but looking more at doing that um, on the math side so the resources that we're taking a look at um, OSC has offered to try some out so actually this uh, second half of the school year, trying some some of those things out with OSC. Um, yep. So to be determined how that will go. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Yeah, facility finance. Um, the school forest group came and gave us a presentation on the school forest, which is phenomenal, and the plans that they have for wanting to uh, integrate that more into. The district, <laughs> yes, to everything. They have some really, really great ideas. Um, Neil came and gave us an update on the middle school HVAC. Um, that's, that's projected to be installed and in service by the time next school year starts. This was originally part of the referendum, but it's being fully grant funded for $280,000. Oh that's um, that's awesome. Um, we talked about the compensation and then the sound systems, which we brought here to you, and then Brent just went over budgets. Did you want to add anything on policy? <laughs> I mean, we saw them all. <laughs> so, so much policy, yes. A pile of policy. Yes, I will say that as we reconvene and restructure, don't be afraid to put your name in for policy. Um, <laughs> It's your first choice. I know. It really is. You learn a lot. It's so <laughs> great. It's so great having the discussions that we have. It's so great digging through and seeing why we do the things we're doing and why we should maybe change or pivot or whatever. Um, it's been it's been mentally exhausting at times, but it's actually been very good for me to see um, just where we're at as a district. And I think it's very helpful. I'm very glad that we are switching all of these over. I'm, I'm glad that even, you know, not on the policy committee, that we were able to read all of these, and I didn't even know there were, I mean, I, was, I, think I knew there were policies yeah. about things, but there's probably, I haven't read them all. Well, there's now there's now I have. Now, well, okay, now, I've, now I've read yeah. up to this point. Uh -huh. sure. What percentage? <laughs> where are we? 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 10%? 20%? 20%? Uh, no, we're getting closer to halfway. Oh, yeah. Are we going to make a good progress? Oh, uh, we can clip it. Right? Like, we so, get a group. So the next like, one, we got the, this. The next ones will be very similar to the ones we just did. Oh, okay. right? So it's like yeah. a different group. So there's, the, we, we want to make sure the policy committee approved them. So then we'll just carry those forward and they made the changes. So um, I'll review them and get them to you. Um, and same with uh, the financial ones will come to the 6 thousandths and then we have a couple heavier lifts with some of the other ones. We're getting there. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. by the end of the summer we right. can be finished. Anything for future meeting and agenda items? We are going to go back into closed session. So yeah. I'm just telling other people. <laughs> we all know that. Okay, so someone want to make a motion? That's right here. I got it. Oh, okay. Motion. Motion to adjourn yeah, yeah. <laughs> to closed session pursuant to Wisconsin statute section 1985-1C, E, and F to consider employment and compensation and performance evaluation data. I'll second. Motion by Barb, second by Heather. Uh, any further discussion on going back into closed? Roll call, period. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yes
Yes. Yes, five and a break. Sure. No. <laughs>